This might be a little bit loud. I apologize. <laughs> Because Nick told me to. Yeah. Oh, hey! Clucking the childs. Nope, that's too early. See? Dangle clacks are already happening. Hang on, hang on. <clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Mother truck and welcome in. Hello. It's Thursday. It's vlog day. You're in the right spot. I got a spiffy new Dixon. We don't have a beer tonight. And I have a full on action packed vlog for you guys planned out tonight. Been waiting. <laughs> Been waiting for this. Megs, I see you, Megs. I heard you coming a mile away, but Ryan's here. The 60 watt guy's here. Frank and Miser's here. Barbara's here. Frank, Frank's here. Janine's here. Vicky Benji, Slader, the lunchbox, the Billy, the Billy Rice. Here we go. Bubbles RC shed. It's freezing up in Canada right now. That is freezing. 37, negative 37 C. That's cold. That's just freezing. That's actually freezing though, right? Isn't it? Is, is that less than freezing? It's below freezing. You're, you're living, it's like liquid nitrogen. Just Canada's covered in liquid nitrogen. Okay. Okay, you guys, let me dial it back a second. Thanks for being here tonight. We got a full on action packed vlog for you guys. Uh, Timestamps will be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. Thanks to my main man, Jeremy V. Those also get turned into chapters across this video. So you can kind of watch whatever you want on the hashtag replay crew. Let's see what we got going uh, coming up tonight. Uh, pretty exciting night. Beerless, like I said, beerless, beerless. What's up, Tim? Chilling, but we're beerless. We're beerless tonight. In fact, we're boozeless tonight for for no real reason. Actually, there is a reason. Uh, we're going to talk about what I've been vaping. We got some Assignment America. I've got some pre-recorded news and advocacy to talk about. Florida is going to need a lot of help coming up real soon. Of course, we're going to have a retro vaping. Uh, of course, we're going to have maybe multiple liquid tastings. Mult maybe multiple liquid tastings. I have a feeling we're going to run long, but I still would like to do two liquid tastings. There's been a bunch of liquids that have come in recently that are kind of just sitting here. And I look at them and I go, I'd like to taste that. I'd like to taste that. I'd like to taste that. So, <laughs> so we might do a multiple, multiple, very random liquid tasting tonight. Yeah, no beer, but I'll explain why in a second. I'll explain why in a second. But, and I also have some mail. I do, I do have some mail. Man, I'm a little bit all over the place tonight. And we're gonna be singing birthdays tonight. All right, I think that I, th <laughs> I think that was the hashtag real quick rundown. But like I said, full on action packed vlog. I appreciate you guys being here. Advocate for Liberty. I appreciate you. Logan exhales. Have a beer for you and then for everybody else. In fact, let's just get into it. Let's just it's not a beer. It's not a beer. And the reason it's not a beer tonight is I received a comment and I thought for the life of me that I screenshotted this comment so that I could save it and, you know, show it to you guys on the screen and everything like that. But I didn't. I really, really thought I did. It's nowhere to be found. I could have taken a screenshot of it and it's just somewhere on my computer, like in the ether of hard drives and like clouds it's just somewhere but i received a comment recently talking about uh the beer segment and this one person said hey you know hey big fan i love the vlog um uh, they said i'm i'm sober now so i don't i don't drink any alcohol um but i really really like the vlog and whenever you drink beer i just have a root beer instead i have i have a root beer float instead and i thought okay that's true i drink beer not everybody does. Not everybody consumes. Not everybody has shed time. Not everybody has beer. And so tonight, for the people that don't drink any alcohol, which there are plenty, lots, lots, and this is no, I'm not judging literally in any way, shape or form, whatever you do or don't do is up, is that's between you and your brain. <laughs> that's between you and your brain. So tonight, 
for all of the people that don't consume alcohol, we are going to make right now, I can't believe I'm this excited about this. We're gonna make root beer float. I don't know who was said root beer float last week, but I my brain could not stop thinking about root beer floats all week long. I woke up on Monday and my first thought was, on Wednesday, I'm gonna go to the store and get root beer. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the store on Wednesday and get root beer so I can make a root beer float. Now, uh, we're gonna construct this literally right now. We're gonna have root beer float vlog. <sighs> You're California sober? I could see that. You know, and that's, look, it's it's to each their own. You know, if, if you don't want to drink, don't drink. If you do, then you should. And if you don't, then you shouldn't. That's that's how I stand on most things. Uh, I have vanilla ice cream. This is uh, uh, the superior brand of ice cream, Tillamook. Vanilla ice cream. Not sure if anybody's had Tillamook. Vanilla ice cream, yeah. Root beer floats are amazing, and I always forget how amazing they are until I have one. And then when you're consuming a root beer float, it's like, why would I ever consume anything else? Why why don't I just eat, why don't I just consume root beer floats? You know, every meal. Hang on, I forgot a straw, and that's a critical component. So hang on, I'll be right back. Had to get a green straw. Had to get a green straw to match. Now, the root beer, the root beer that we're going to be looking You've been to the Tillamook Creamery? So you've had like fresh, creamy ice cream just out of the magical vat. They're just like, jump in, just swimming in ice cream. That sounds delightful. That's what I want to do. I've been to the Tillamook Cheese Factory, which isn't the, it's not, it's a different, whole, whole other thing. All I remember is I was a little kid, I went to the Tillamook Cheese Factory and it just stank the whole time, just stunk like cheese the whole time I was there. And then I was mad because we didn't even really get any cheese at the end. I was expecting like some cheese, like some cheese, we're going to a cheese factory, let me eat cheese. I was expecting like big wheels of cheese, you know, and big logs of cheese and like that tool that they pull a cheese sample. I thought I was gonna get to pull cheese samples. Didn't, lame. Here's the root beer that we have tonight. Now, it's A&W, it's pretty tried and true. I am a root beer fan, my wife is not a root beer fan. So whenever I get root beer, I never have to worry about like, who drank my root beer, who drank my root beer? It was me, I'm the only one that consumes it in this household. Listen, A&W root beer is fine. Middle Morrissey, yeah, Tillamook, I'm glad, look, all I had to say was Tillamook, and like so many, so many of you are on board with Tillamook, I love this, <laughs> I love this, Tillamook is the superior creamery dairy brand, uh, in my opinion, A&W on the other hand is not the superior root beer brand in my opinion, A&W is fine, it's fine, some people are gonna say, what, Barks root beer, right? The best root beer, the best root beer, the best root beer. Let's see if I can pour this in here without it going foamy crazy. No, that's what happens. That's just what happens with a root beer float. There's no, uh, there's no escaping it, is there? There's no escaping it, unless you put the ice cream on second, but why would you do that? Why would you do that? You, you miss out on all this like creamy emulsion happening down here. Look at that. Ice cream just starts melting into the root beer. You get that creamy, creamy root beer emulsion, sort of a rudimentary paste happening down there. Sure, there's a lot of head on the top, sure. But this is the superior way to do a, a root beer float. My preferred root beer is either fountain root beer, just fountain root beer, any fountain root beer, or mug, mug, mug. Yes, rated R, 
mug root beer is the in my opinion again this is all this is all just opinions all just opinions but mug root beer in my opinion is like the greatest most superior root beer in the history of root beers just love it just love it ibc look it's fine virgil's it's it's good dad's is good a and w is good mug mug root beer is like chef's kiss chef's kiss so here we go everybody happy thursday to you mark your calendars this was the vlog where we did a freaking <laughs> root beer float a root beer float for all the non-drinkers cheers there's so many things i can pair this with oh whoops i put my straw on upside down I put the bendy end in the bottom. That was dumb because you need the stabby part to stab the ice cream, you see? That's the best part. You stab the ice cream. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Root beer float. That's it. This is my lethal injection meal. I used to think it was Ikea meatballs. I think it's a root beer float now. And I love the bubbles like going through the ice cream. Get out of here. That's just cool. That's cool. Next week, Jamaican ginger beer. Sure. I'll ch listen. <laughs> I'll try to track something down. I don't know that they have. This is good. This is good. What can I pair this with right now? Um, peanut butter. I don't know. Strawberry. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try some, uh, no, let's try peanut butter. I don't know why I want to pair this with peanut butter for some reason. I feel like a peanut butter root beer float is something I'm going to be into. Those flavors just, yeah, they can't go wrong together, right? Nope, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Peanut butter, root beer, vanilla. Get out of here. This is incredible. We're going to do in root beer floats every week from now on. Beer. Psh. More like root beer and vanilla ice cream. Okay, here's the thing. I'm going to take this ice cream back to the freezer real quick. I just don't want it to get all like thawed out and eaten. I'll be right back. just got home my wife just got home my wife just got home i'm excited to see my wife she just got home she's been gone all day she went to the office today which is like ugh, so obnoxious going to work dumb all right well cheers to all the non-alcohol drinkers this root beer floats for you mother truckers it why is it so why is it so good why is it so good vanilla ice cream creamy root beer how is this how is this so good it's this most simple thing it's the most simple little just guilty not even guilty pleasure just a just a pleasure just a human pleasure you know root beer floats mm-hmm i'm gonna have to get a mini fridge in here stock up on root beer and ice cream I'll be like the I'll be like the opposite of Don Draper. You know, you go into Don Draper's office and he just pours you whiskey in a glass. You come into my office, I'll be like root beer float. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> scoop, scoop, scoop. Plop. Here you go. Root beer float. Light up a cigarette. Root beer float. Anyway, root beer floats for the win. It's just a thing of beauty. And there's no booze in there. So it's not going to mess me up and it's not going to make the vlog all weird and rambly and <laughs> just weird and rambly just in general. Good morning to you, soft carrots. Good morning to you. Well, 
All right. Well, we got a root beer float in our system. Feels pretty good. Let's get over to the super chats. We're going to be, uh, we're gonna, probably going to be running long tonight. And I just want to point out, um, I'm apologizing if my camera seems off, like a little bit jittery, a little bit weird. My HDMI capture card shit on me, just dead. And I haven't had time to use a new, buy a new one. And so I'm using an old HDMI capture card that is not quite as good. So it's going to look maybe a little bit janky. It's okay. I'm just apologizing. You know, I try to have a certain level of, you know, quality and professionalism over here on this channel. And when it's not up to par, you know, keeps me up at night. Slater, that's very gracious of you. He says, my dog came. Don't worry, New Wave Dave. I'm checking those hella chats. I'm checking them. My dog came in sliding into the kitchen in a white shirt and sunglasses. He slipped down the glasses to give me that look. <laughs> And I knew it was on. He body slammed me into the dishwasher and said, give Nick money or I press start. Bro, you almost got dishwashed by your dog. Straight up dog washed. <laughs> Slater, hashtag love to the chat. Hashtag yo yo love. Hashtag DJ mattress is real. Hashtag you know where it goes. Hashtag cluck and chads. Hashtag hydro homies. Hashtag like the stream. Hashtag hey, no, seriously. Hey, love you. Hey, Slater, love you. Appreciate you, Slater. Hope you're doing good. The Seamus, the great Seamus says, this is the line. This is the lineup for the guar tickets. <laughs> oh, is this the lineup for the guar tickets? Oh, it's not. Well, still happy to be here with you all on another MTVD. Hashtag vape bag because he works. Hashtag F the FDA. Hashtag cluck and chowds. So many clouds. So many clouds. So many chowds, rather. Chowds getting clucked nonstop. Alley 689 uh, I got a new coil in the Sith and High on Fire blasting in the background. Let's go. Hell yeah, High on Fire. In fact, Allie, hang on. I ran across this image. Image. I ran across this picture of the first ever office that I ever had when I started doing Grim Green. And there's a High on Fire poster. Right there, high on fire with Goat Whore at Club Vegas. That's funny. I was literally just looking at this today, thinking about high on fire. Boom, super chat, high on fire. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. That's fate. That's fate or destiny or something happening right there. <laughs> Your homework is to go listen to high on fire because they rule ass. Frank, that's a very gracious of you, Frank. Uh, yo, yo, Nick, I would love for you to wish my daughter happy birthday. And today is my son's. Oh, oh, yes. Frank's. Can I just say Frank's family? Frank's kids? Frank's kids. Frank's son and daughter. Hell yeah. Happy freaking birthday. Yeah, we'll sing happy birthday in a little bit. Hope you're doing good, Frank. I would love to do that. Terry, boom. There's a fist bump. Boosh. Right back at you, Terry. Appreciate you. Jim Bubba says, yo, yo, Nick. My son George turns 19 this week. Hang on. I have to actually put this down. Jim Bubba. Son. George. Party. Party. You tell him, Steve, Dave. <laughs> What's up, Ranger Rusty? Hope you're doing good. You tell him, Steve, Dave. And then we got one last super chat. Dee Dee, Dee Dee, damn it. Uh, love root beer floats, but when I need just a tad more, I substitute rum chata for the ice cream. It's like a hard root beer float. Delicious. MTVD, hashtag MTVD. That sounds great. You know, there's a thousand ways I could gussy up a root beer float. Horchata ice cream. My wife made a horchata ice cream not too long ago. That in a root beer float, I think would be the bomb. The bomb.com or make a root beer float with one of those, you know, hard root beers. Everybody remember the hard root beers that were real popular? They had like hard root beer and hard ginger ale. Make a root beer float with a hard root beer. It would kind of be sick. That would kind of be sick with it. The best part is when the ice cream is melty. That's the best part of a root beer float. I think we all know that. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's the Super Chats. And what I would like to do right now, how's everybody doing? We're just, we're only a half hour into this here live stream. Hope everybody's having a good night. Hayes, how you doing? It's evening. It's, I mean, it's evening here. Uh, Jeremy M., I don't think we're having a contest or a giveaway tonight. Unless I can think of something. <gasps> what? I just got raided on Twitch? Get out of here. Oh. Woo. oh, my gosh. Thank you. I didn't. I, I, I got raided on Twitch. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. Oh, thank you so much. Mr. Sam, Dampfalot TV. Look at that. Franzi, Dampfalot. Oh, that's who it, it has to be. That has to be the instigator. Yeah, there there he is. That's the instigator. Dampfalot. I knew it. I had a feeling. That's awesome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for that raid. That was cool as hell. And I feel bad. I don't even have the ch the chat on. I don't have the chat on right now. It's just emoji mode. But thank you, Twitch. Hell yeah, Twitch. See, Twitch is fun. We have the ability to get raided on Twitch, and we don't have the ability to get raided on YouTube. Hell yeah, Twitch. Love you guys. Thank you, damn lot. I I think I know who you are. I think our paths have crossed. I think I know who you are. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Woo! Okay, thank you guys. Well, that was cool. Oh, that was cool. That was really cool. I haven't got a, I haven't got a raid on Twitch in a while. Oh, that was cool. All right. Well, now that we have a root beer in our system and we got through some super chats, there are a few things that I have been vaping. So that means it's going to be time to throw it on over to Kitchen Guy. What I've been vaping. Yeah, hey, it's uh, Kitchen Guy here. I'm sorry. Desk Guy makes me shoot these like really early in the morning for some reason, but I'm actually in a good mood today because, eh, look, there's been a little... Uh, bit of changes here happening at Grim Green Industries over the holiday break. Um, kitchen guy, me, hi, I've moved just a little bit, not out of the kitchen. The kitchen's still basically right here. I'm about four feet away from where I used to be, but now in this new kitchen guy position, I get wrong, wrong. How did I do the wrong? Hang on. This, this should be correct. <clears throat> All right. Hey, well, thanks, Desk Guy. It's Kitchen Guy here. And uh, despite being, you know, the favorited reporter these days for Grim Green Industries, he still forces me to shoot these early in the morning when I'm like unshowered and unshaven. But if you want to know what I've been vaping, we're here. We're in the kitchen. It's Kitchen Guy. Listen, as far as pods go, there's probably a bunch out here. The new feeling A2, starting to put that through its paces. Pretty good so far. Smock Novo Master is also in the middle of getting a review. I think I'm getting closer to this review because it's done that Novo thing where the, the flavor drops. Mm-hmm. Still vaping, just no flavor. Been having an extraordinarily good time with this San AIO. I like the shift tank on the inside. I think I like these coil heads after this much use. Strawberry swirls on the inside. The flavor is literally just busting. And I know on Instagram I said this is a deck of cards and someone was like, well, a billet box is a deck of cards. No, billet box is way bigger than a deck of cards. This is like actually the diameter and specifications of a deck of cards. It's substantially smaller than a billet box. It is out billet box the billet box. It's an SX Mini Pure Max and my honeymoon phase with the Pure Max is over. I still think it vapes really good. It's my go-to pod. I think it's leaps and bounds better than a lot of other pods. 
but I have been running into some severe leaking issues. Severe leaking issues. It gets in my battery, and now both my Pure Max batteries auto fire when I flick them. Just for a second, it just goes tss, 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 and auto fires, and I don't like it, and I don't know why. And I'm hoping that the Pure Max didn't completely burn me, but I still stand by it. It vapes freaking awesome. In the one time, like in the same amount of time that I've been using this one Pure Max pod, I feel like I probably would have gone through like four Novo pods. Only because I'm lazy and I refuse to change it from its Christmas colors. Uh, it's an Empire with the Zoo One on top. Uh, the Uncommon Number Four Tobacco is on the inside. Stellar. This has been going since way before Christmas. I would like to switch this over to the green and black panels. See if I can get like a green, black, green, black thing going. But for now, <laughs> into January, it's still the Christmas colors. That's okay. Additionally, from Tuesday, I set up, I think what is maybe my favorite mech in the history of all mech mods, it's the Omen. This is years and years and years and, ye and years old. It's topped with the TM, uh, sorry, Twisted Messes TM24 Pro Series on top with some Twisted Messes Staggertons on the inside, Cornflake Sugar Cookie. Uh, this is a great vape. This is this is everything I want <laughs> in a vape. I'm a big mech mod guy. I love this particular mech mod. It's so weighty and well balanced and it's got that little swoop notch that you can just hold it. Cali claw the bottom, cornflake sugar cookie from baked is on the inside and this liquid, this particular bottle of liquid has been steeping for two years. And let me tell you that literally every flavor in the baked line only gets better with time. Cheers. It's a little bit old school feeling because it's an 18650. So it's, you know, it's not a 21700. It's not 2700. So it feels a little bit underpowered. So I had to bring back the purge. Once upon a time, I was, I had to purge every RDA I ever vaped on a Mac. That has been getting a shit ton of use. And I think the thing out here that has been getting the most, 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 most use is this setup right here. Shout out to Vape Smarter. This device rules. The NTSU on the inside, shout out to you, TJ. That rules. I love the drip tip from Tribal Buddha. That rules. But really what's bringing this whole setup together is what usually brings a setup together, and that is the liquid. I can have the greatest setup in the history of all the setups, my favorite mod, my favorite RDA, but if the juice on the inside isn't something I'm in love with, then it's not gonna become that like top tier, everyday use type of thing. And this is where everything comes together. This is luscious strawberry swirl on the inside, which is quickly becoming like a legacy liquid for me. I just love it. This is where everything comes together and it's just a thing of beauty, you know? I love that long, long, long restricted lung and you just exhale a gigantic, like flavorful weather system. It's my favorite. I like it. Poor couch guy. He's still in bed. He hasn't even got up yet. So I'm going to throw it back because I know there's some desk warriors. I'm going to throw it back to desk guy. Yeah, that's right. Desk warriors. Thanks, kitchen guy. Appreciate you. As far as I know, living room guy is still in bed. Still in bed. Hasn't even bothered to get up today. Probably feeling a little bit depressed. Not really sure. We're, we're going to find work for him here. But uh, Desk Warrior, A number one. A number one, reach for Desk Warrior. It's the hollow point RDA on the Revival Mac. I just love it. I can't get enough of it. Peanut Butter, the Uncommon number six. This. This has been the Desk Warrior. Not just that, I got that new uh, Boro from Aspire, the Raga AIO. Been really liking it. It's got a really slick hand feel, really good fit and finish. It's got the exposed titty battery. I like exposed batteries on devices. Blaze. Blaze Bridge is on the inside. This is my second re-wicking, and I'm pretty sure it's way too much wick. Thin. 
I think the blaze bridge needs to be thinned. Free toilet guy? Someday, someday, someday you're going to meet toilet guy and you're going to regret meeting toilet guy. Hog, Valhalla. It's just one of those setups that's just goofy and ridiculous and I have to love it and I have to vape it. <laughs> Strawberry swirl. Strawberry swirls on the inside. Uh, and another strawberry. Let's see. I mean, I have a Cali burn pod here too. I got a Cali burn in that clips mecca that I'm in the middle of doing a review dead. in. The, oh, look, there's your chats dead in the middle of doing a review. It's pretty okay. I would say the king of the desk warriors is this mech. I posted this mech RDA combo on Instagram on Tuesday, I think, after the vape fiddle. Keen. It's the mother trucking Keen mech mod with a layer cake on it. A layer cake? A layer cake. Someone, someone tell bathroom guy to spray some damn Febreze. Layer cake. The layer cake's good. I didn't know. I thought it was bad. I vaped it. I've built it and been like, this is bad. I vaped it and been like, this is bad. And then for some reason on Tuesday, good. Suddenly became good. Uh, you know, this is, this is another setup that everything came together. Fresh batch. Twisted Timmy's fresh batch. These crackly ass coils in here. The flavor is great. The airflow is great. I dig the keen just a lot more than I used to, I think. I mean, I remember reviewing this and not being in love with the ergonomics of it because I felt like I had to grip it too low. Not sure that's the problem anymore. Plus the crackle, the crackle from these mech mod guy, <laughs> the actual mech mod guy. Do I, do I have your seal of approval on the keen? I want to know what is mech mod guy's favorite mech mod. That's really, that's really the questions we need answered. The Keen slaps. I like the Keen a lot. And for some reason, holy shit, I like the layer cake. Who saw this coming? Yeah, Febreze, you're, you're correct. Febreze is essentially just poison you spray in your air. Everything is though. I have an incense burning back here. Poison and just carcinogens in my brain. <laughs> it's carcinogens everywhere. Um, and that's kind of it. I, I Like I said, I have two pods in here and an Oxford pod. Everything else is like in transition. It needs to get cleaned. I've got the monarchy going, but the MS is coming out of here. This is going to get a review. The bo Boros, not, I mean, the, the mod isn't going to get a review, but the inside is going to get a review. So there's things being taken apart. The MS is a good bridge. And yeah, that's... That's it. Surprisingly, what I've been vaping. I, I usually have the bad habit of setting up constantly, constantly setting up things, just constantly, constantly setting up things. I've been trying to refrain from doing that. I've been trying to refrain from doing that. Kevin Chocolate, the Keen's one of your daily bangers. Oh. Swat, whoa, my favorite right now is a Gathub Swiss solid brass and sandwich with copper. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds cool. That sounds cool, mech mod guy. I'm going to have to look up this now. Gathub. Gathub. Will I be able to find this on the internet? <gasps> no, I can't find it. Steam community. I mean, this might be it. Nope. I saw steam. I thought vape. Then nah, it's video games or something. Oh, mechanical mods. No, nope, I can't track this down. Ah, oh, send it in. Send it in for an assignment. Planet Globe. I want to see that mech. <laughs> send it on in. Send it on in mech mod guy. Send it on in. And now, speaking of assignment, Planet Globe, it's time for. I think it's time for assignment. Planet Globe. <laughs> That's right. It's Assignment America time. It's actually not Assignment America. We call it Assignment Planet Globe. And this is where you guys send me guys 
your pictures. I want to see them. I want to see, whoops. Whoa. Okay. I guess we're doing these old school. We're doing these one at a time. I didn't preload these in here because I'm a jerk. Uh, the first one we're going to look at, Dave. Dave wrote in and says, hey, Nick, I've been vaping for about six years now. I started out with just regular setups and moved into the Boro game about four years ago. Took one hobby and combined it with my love of photography. Came in watching all your videos to learn and I'm still around. Awesome. Thanks for all you do, Dave. Dave takes some good ass pictures. Look at that billet box, Dave. Don't you want that billet box, Dave? Look at this billet box. It looks like Beskar. It's got like Beskar panels. That's rad. That's rad. That's just rad. Imperial symbol, mission switch, mission switch. But wait, there's more. We got more. We got one more from Dave. This, boom. Yeah, that's rad. That's rad as hell. That's a uh, Mission Astro, right? That's the Mission Astro, a 3D printed Mission Astro. What bridge is on the inside? Koto Roto? Roto? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Dave. Those are rad, Dave. Thank you for sending those in. I love it. I love seeing your Assignment Americas. Uh, let's hear from James. And I think he spells it with a Y and a Z. Uh, yeah, he just says, hey, Nick, hope all's well. Here's my daily bangers. Vapresso Lux. That is a uh, Thunderhead Creations RTA. Or no, that's the Rebirth RTA, right? Brrp, the little Phoenixy thing. I think that's the Rebirth. I think that's the rebirth. Yeah, and a, and a Vupu pod. Damn it. I love it. That Vapor SO Lux, that's a good device. That's a good device. I remember I really loved the crap out of that device. Oh, we got John. John, the bearded vape god, is 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 assigning America to us. <laughs> there it is. First of all, John, the bearded vape god, he says, hey, Nick, I'm sorry. I won't be able to watch your live stream tonight as I have an early start tomorrow. You see, it's mine and my wife's one-year anniversary. Hell yeah, and we're going to the Jurassic Coast in Dorset. Uh, have a good stream. Hashtag replay crew. Here's some of my daily bangers. The Nano 3 uh, Lux Max XR will be coming with me. Sorry for the long email. That was not a long email. Uh, take care. Stay hydrated. Uh, be good to each other. Love you. The bearded vape god. Yeah, bearded vape god. First of all, that liquid, lemon lime, sounds delicious. Second of all, the little uh, stand there for your Vapresso Cross 3. It's cool. Little retail stand. That's cool. I immediately wanted one. <laughs> I immediately wanted one, Mr. Bearded Vape God. Hope, hope you're doing well, bearded vape god. Um, I think I got like one more Rose. Is this Rose? Hell yeah. Rose sent this in. Uh, he says, Hey Nick Rose here. Uh, these are my, this is my second or third assignment planet globe. And I'm proud to say that I'm almost three years smoke free. And here are my bangers. Thalima quest with the Zeus X RTA. I said Zeus X, not Zeus X. It's Zeus X, not Zeus X. Zeus X RTA and the Lemon Pie. Tomahawk from BP Mods with the Hazard RBA and the RTA conversion with Energy Ice. Diacodes Micro, that's my white whale right there. Diacodes Micro with the K Fun Light Plus 2021 and the Kronos Tab Plus. Uh, and to mention my day, uh, my day to day is the Thelema. And the one that is not used that often, but more indoors, is the Diacodes. And for almost any time of the day, uh, it's the Tomahawk. Go out for a walk, go for coffee. It's the Tomahawk. P.S. Uh, love your stuff, man. Keep up the good work. And I will say, I and I will say till the day that I die that the Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club is the best community out there. <laughs> Rose, I love it. Thank you for sending those in. That little diacodes, the little diacodes you got there. That's that's my white whale. That's the dream. That's what I want. That's everything. I want to put, no, Zeus X, Ranger Rusty. Come on, it's Zeus X, not Zeus X. The, that diacodes with the K-Fun Light Plus, that's like, that's everything. That's, I, I would get rid of 90% of what I own to have that diacodes K-Fun setup. That's like my white whale. I, I've always wanted it. 
Always wanted it. Well, my ice cream's melting. We're getting all super creamy in here. Root beer floats, you know, they'll, they'll just put a smile on your face. They'll just put a smile on your face. Uh, I had one more from Sean. Sean sent this in. What do you have to say, Sean? Uh, Sean says, yo, yo, Nick, just dropping a, a pick of my daily bangers that get me through the day. Been following since 2015. Uh, I started at smoking at 13 years old. And I've struggled. I'm now 46 and I've struggled with quitting smoking. I've been a dual user for years. The Smoke Cloud Beast, the original Relo from J Jabo, Triple 18650 mod, got me off the SIGs for months. But alas, when I got a head cold, I couldn't vape without coughing my head off, so I started smoking again. With my lungs hurting every night after smoking more than a pack a day, I decided to get off them again. Two months, smoke free. Couldn't feel better. I can take full deep breaths again without pain or coughing. Thank you for everything that you do for us and others. Hashtag replay crew. <sighs> I love this. Sorry, that was so up there. Uh, I love this. From left to right, um, Aegis 200, Freemax M Pro Tank, Slam Cake inside, Drag X Single 18650, Surf Satisfying, uh -oh. pardon me, Burp Life, on the inside. Uh, an Orion disposable, strawberry watermelon, and a views pod. Golden tobacco. I I love this email, Sean. I love hearing your stories. Not necessarily the struggling parts of it, but the parts where you stick with it and you power through and, and you get rid of those cigarettes and you get back with the vape. My God, I love that. I love it when people have the dedication and like the, the, the intestinal fortitude to say goodbye to cigarettes and jump into a vape and then stick with it. And, and two, I just love this picture. The views, it's like, this is what FDA wants you to vape. <laughs> the FDA, they want you to vape a views. Everybody else wants to vape a disposable. And then we have like, you know, for lack of a better term, like real hobby vapes on the end. It's like the full evolution of vaping. The, f <laughs> the full evolution of vaping in there. You could have had a little horrible like 2010 sig alike in there. <laughs> that would have been one. <laughs> that would have been it. Um, but yeah, all right, that wraps it up. Assignment America. Hey, you guys, listen, if you're out there and you have a setup and you're thinking at your setup, you're looking at it and you're going, I want to put this on a grim green vlog send it over. Nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject to that one thing or assignment planet globe. Assignment planet globe is probably the best way to go. Assignment planet globe. I'll see the emails. I'll see the attachments. They'll get downloaded, filed, and used accordingly on this here live stream. But I love it. I love looking through uh, people's bangers that, that keep them off of cigarettes. These are, these are miracles. These are little mechanical miracles, you know? The Ego One was your first device, Janine. I remember reviewing the Ego One. Yep. Yeah. That was a device that I got that I didn't super love. And I told Joytech, I didn't super love this. And they said, oh, we'll send you another. We'll send you better ones. Though We sent you a bad one. We'll send you a good one. I said, oh, okay. Then they sent me more. Still didn't love it. Sent me more. Finally kind of liked it. Finally did the review for it. The Ego One. That was like a, yeah. That was a, that's a memorable, <laughs> it's a memorable device. It's interesting when people rattle off like types of products, like, oh, uh, I used the Geek Vape, whatever, Subtank or, or this, or they'll say Aegis, or they'll say, you know, like the Relo. I'll immediately remember when I was shooting the review for it. I immediately remember the review for it. I remember like using it and getting it. Like my brain just gets flooded with these memories. Every time someone mentions a device, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. I took it to Ireland with me, you know, immediately. It's like, it's almost as if my life has completely revolved around vaping for the last 15 years. It's almost like that. It's almost like that. All right, guys. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to go check in on some super chats. But then after that, we got to get down to brass tacks. I got a sticky finger and it's making my mouse sticky. That's okay. These things happen. 
Oh, the sewer rug has graced us with his presence. Uh, yo, yo, and Fromputations. I am replay crew on this one. Instead, I will be celebrating 14 years with Mrs. Rug. Oh, I love that. That is heartwarming, sewer rug. Boosh on, good people, and I'll catch you all next time. Hashtag yo, yo, tendencies. Hashtag Grim Army. Hashtag Fromp. You're really trying to make Fromp stick, and I like that. It's never going to stick, but you should definitely keep trying. Happy anniversary to you, uh, Sewer Rug. Big love to you and your wife. Ethan, that's very gracious of you. Hey, man, it's my birthday on the 13th of January. That's soon, Ethan. Let's get you added to this list here, Ethan. Hell yeah, Ethan. Happy freaking birthday to you. Happy birthday. We got red. Yo, yo, Nick, good to see you. Uh, ended a good birthday with the vlog. Awesome. Hell yeah, Red. Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, wait, do I have your name written down here? Unless you go by something else. Unless you go by something else, then I'm going to sing you happy birthday. Happy birthday, Red. Hope you enjoy the vlog. Chill, kick, it, kick back, put your feet up. Shrek, A up, Nick. Uh, SC Mini Pure Max retail version is today in the UK, hopefully the US soon. Hope to see you in May. Just a quick dive in. I might be in, I might be in the UK in May. So usually, not usually, but sometimes vape shows will line up so that I can get to them all in a row, you know? And it's it's just a little bit easier. And in years past, it's always been Vapor Expo UK and then Hall of Vape or Hall of Vape and then Vapor Expo UK. They're usually about a week apart. Hall of Vape, Vapor Expo UK, Hall of Vape, Vapor Expo UK. And that's just the way it's been going. Although this year I might go to Indonesia in May, which means I won't be able to go to the UK and I will be able to go to Germany. If I don't go to Indonesia, I still don't know that I'll be able to go to the UK and then come home for a week and a half and then go back to Germany. The timing is just bad. It's just bad. So I'm trying to get to as many vape events as I can this year. And Hall of Vape, I think, is my target most important vape show that I, want, that I really, really, really want to get to. That I really, really want to get to. I just love that town. I love going to Germany. I love that show. It's really fun. Really a really fun show. Trap Musing. The hospital Wi-Fi has block access to every vape store I've tried. What? Get out of here. They won't let you order vape stuff. Did the hospital really block access to online vape stores? Oh, man. We got a lot to do. We got a lot of work to do here. I, I, I'm sorry to hear that, Trap Musing. I, I'm I'm sorry. Raw Chuck presents, sorry about being late. I was helping the local theater with their sound problems. That's the most wholesome. Are you like in a Hallmark movie right now? Are you? Is your, is your uh, big city girlfriend gonna <laughs> drive back and find you helping the local theater with their sound problems? And be like, oh, Chuck, what happened? You're like, well, I work at a local theater now and now it's a hallmark movie raw chuck that's that's the most heartwarming reason to be late i've ever seen trap musing p.s you missed my birthday oh no no no! I, ha I have it written here i have it written here i'm sorry trap musing i'm sorry i did miss it but but it's it's it'll be rectified this will all be rectified trap musing this will all be rectified oh trap musing i forget you're in australia are you in Australia, trap musing? Earn, there he is. Yo, yo, driving back from the hospital. Oh, good. My stepdad is doing really good. Uh, I think it was a migraine that caused the blood pressure spike. Still not sure, though. Thanks for the love. Oh, Earn, I love you, man. I I'm glad to hear that your stepdad's doing okay. Whew, that's stressful, man. It's stressful. Life is stressful. Family stuff is stressful. Gunny's here, and that's stressful. I'm just kidding, Gunny. I love you, man. I hope you're doing good. Listen, that that's stressful, Earn, but I, I'm happy. Eyes on the road. Drive safely, and then uh, maybe we'll see you in the hangs tonight, Earn. Huh? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, 
Real quick before birthdays, let's do the news and advocacy. This is a pre-recorded news and advocacy. It should be about 15 minutes long. Although I think tonight it might be like 17 minutes long. It's a lot of good stuff. Only a little bit of rage sweat. And uh, yeah, that's all. So let's all tuck in. For some news and advocacy, I'll be there with you in the chat. This is pre-recorded. Let's go. News. All right. What's up, everybody? Let's go. It's News Guy here. It's time to tuck in for some 15 minutes of ever important news and advocacy. Very important advocacy. In fact, the first state that we're looking at with the importance of advocacy in mind is the great state of Florida. Every citizen and every vapor in the state of Florida should be thanking and supporting their local advocacy organization, the Florida Smoke Free Association, because the Florida Smoke Free Association, the local Florida advocacy group, has prevented a flavor ban from ever taking hold in Florida. It's one of the few states where they've tried flavor bans multiple, multiple, multiple times, but thanks to the efforts of the local advocacy organization, the Florida Smoke Free Association, there is no flavor ban in Florida. Florida is actually a shining example of advocacy working perfectly, but unfortunately, all, all good things must come to an end, right? There wasn't an official call to action for it for a few days, and now there is an official CASA call to action for the Florida. They're basically calling this the Stop Big Tobacco Protection Act. Reynolds America, good old RJR, good old Reynolds American. They're going around the country trying to enact laws that benefit them and literally nobody else. This is an example of big tobacco trying to bend the laws of the marketplace so that it suits their business and nobody else's. So what's happening in Florida is what's called a PMTA registry bill. And these are going around the country. This is something to expect in 2024. It's already taken hold in a few states. And Nick from Florida, shop owner and member of the Florida Smoke Free Association says, since when does Florida copy other states in lawmaking when it impacts public health negatively? Now, Ashley Moody is siding with five other states that take adult freedoms away from adults. RJR bill exists in five other states right now. Disgusting, completely, truly and honestly, I could not agree with Nick Moore. It is, it is thoroughly disgusting. Legislation known among advocates as a PMTA registry bills are being promoted in Tallahassee by a major tobacco company. If enacted, this law would effectively make the state of Florida an enforcement arm of the Food and Drug Administration, empowering state authorities to enforce the disastrous federal anti-vaping regulations. This would put hundreds of independent vape shops out of business, hundreds of workers out of jobs, and thousands of Floridians at risk of returning to smoking or delaying attempts and quitting. A.G. Ashley Moody is pushing this legislation and need to, needs to understand the damage that this will cause to public health. This is essentially the big tobacco protection bill. They're not banning vaping and they're not enacting a flavor ban. They're simply saying, yeah, vaping can be here, but the only vaping products allowed here will be vaping products approved by the FDA. If this goes through, the only legal vape you'll be able to purchase in Florida comes from a big tobacco company because that's what's been authorized by FDA. Florida isn't the first state to do it. They're just the most current recent state trying to do it. And it's a big deal because Florida prior to this has been such a champion of vaping, such a champion of harm reduction. Once again, thanks to the local advocacy organization, the Florida Smoke Free Association. It's not just Florida where there's new legislation coming up. It's not just Michigan where new legislation is coming up. There are a lot of call to actions popping up because it's January 2024. This is the beginning of the legislative cycle. So at the beginning of the year here is where we're gonna see everything being introduced. If someone's gonna introduce a tax, it's gonna happen now. If someone's gonna introduce a flavor ban, it's gonna happen now. If someone in Florida, AG Ashley Moody, is going to introduce legislation that protects big tobacco companies, it's gonna start happening like literally right now. We, we go through this every year, every year, year after year after year after year, January at the beginning of the year, hi, 
Welcome to a whole trough of shoveled at you anti-vape legislation. So please, please do that call to action for Florida. And if you're in Florida, get involved in the Florida Smoke Free Association. When people tell you that advocacy is stupid, they're basically telling you that fighting for your rights is stupid. I can't think of something I would rather fight for than my rights. <laughs> well, and we, now we got we're shifting gears a little bit. We got we got our old buddy Professor Stanton Glance just embarrassing himself again. I'm going to talk about this in just a second, but I love Twitter. I love Twitter so much and I like what Elon Musk has done. With, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can't I like that what Elon Musk has done with Twitter so much that I'm now officially going to be calling it by its new name of X. I'm going to say Twitter X. I was just going to dead name Twitter into the ground and eternally call it Twitter, but I have to give credit where credit is due. Community notes on Twitter is one of my new favorite things of all time. So out of a little bit of respect for Elon Musk, I'm going to start calling it Twitter X. Stanton Glance gets on Twitter and says, oh, e-cigarettes are associated with heart attacks and never smokers. Assuming that's what the study actually said, but it doesn't. This comes from the American Heart Association study saying vaping combined with smoking is likely as harmful as smoking cigarettes alone, which, I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't, it's going to sound stupid when I say this, but fucking duh, combining smoking cigarettes with any activity is going to incur the same harms as smoking cigarettes alone. This is like saying people who, who smoke in their car get the same toxic chemicals as people who smoke in their house. Right. The location's not the problem. The cigarettes are the problem. So if someone smokes cigarettes and does anything, they're going to incur the harm from smoking cigarettes. Vaping combined with smoking, drinking combined with smoking, walking combined with smoking, driving combined with smoking, bicycling combined with smoking, hiking combined with smoking, sleeping combined with smoking. Did you know? Hiking, people who smoke cigarettes and hike still have the same harms as people who just smoke cigarettes and don't hike. Now, if we look down here into the limitations of the study, the study has several limitations. Can only identify associations, not causal relationships. Okay, that's immediately junk science. To establish a causal inference is necessary to have a longitudinal study design. They didn't. This study relies on self-reported data subject to recall and misclassification bias. Sure, we'll ignore that. We acknowledge that it is not known when cardiovascular disease relative to e-cigarette use in the study subjects. Oh, okay, it is possible that some of the subjects with cardiovascular disease reported that they had the illness before e-cigarettes became available in the U.S. in 2007. Oh, no big deal. We can just ignore all that stuff. There was not enough data on when the subject first developed heart problems. This study did not collect data on subjects' family history of cardiovascular disease, medication use, exercise, or obstructive sleep apnea. Essentially what they're saying is, well, this study doesn't really prove anything, but we're going to present it like it does. Stanton Glance is d desperately one of those people that I want to see get community noted on Twitter so, so bad, so bad. And I know it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. It'll happen. Oh, this should be a quick one, but uh, we got some new Cochrane science. Shit, yeah, we got some new Cochrane science today. Published today, well, January 8th, Cochrane Library, living review of e-cigs to quit smoking. 10 new studies, now 88 studies, high certainty evidence, nicotine vapes help more than people quit smoking six months than NRT, Cancer Research UK funded. Meta-analysis. I don't think that people grasp like the weight of Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group saying high certainty evidence. This is the pinnacle. This is the creme de la creme of scientific knowledge. This is, this is the best. This is the most top tier, top quality, high caliber science that exists. Let's just look at this graph that I just found. Let's let's look at the at the quality of science going from the bottom to the top. Editorials are at the bottom. Expert opinions at the very bottom. There's no science there. It's just opinions. It's just expert opinions, nothing. Mechanistic studies, sure. Mechanistic studies, sure. That's the next level above that. Then we're going to get into case studies. Case reports, this is evidence, but it's very low quality, low level evidence. Cross-sectional surveys and studies, well, that's much better. That's much more reliable. Now we're, we're sort of cutting through the chattel and the chaff and getting to, to the meat of it. Cross-sectional surveys and studies. Above that, 
case control studies, which there are plenty of. Above that, cohort studies like the Veritas cohort study. There are, are multiple cohort studies. And then even above that, we're getting into like this is just empirical science. Things like randomized controlled trials, which we have plenty <laughs> of, plenty, plenty of randomized controlled trials. We have so many randomized controlled trials. That's why Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group is doing a meta-analysis of all of these randomized controlled trials. And then above randomized controlled trials, what's at the very top? systematic reviews and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. I'm not saying that a meta-analysis is like the best science just because it suits vaping. It does suit vaping, but meta-analysis are the most reliable science because it just is. It's the top. They're doing a meta-analysis of hundreds and hundreds of other studies, hundreds and hundreds of other randomized controlled trials. They can't run from the science forever. Now, lastly, Harvard. I've started a folder. I've started a folder. You see, I've started a folder of screenshots of community notes because community notes, again, giving all credit that is due to Elon Musk, community notes is the best thing that's happened on social media possibly ever, you know, just literally ever. On Twitter X, it is getting increasingly difficult, damn near impossible in some cases, to just lie. You can't do it anymore. People getting community noted left and right. This is fact checking without fact checkers. This is the public fact checking authority. Oh, I can never forget my, my friend Siskin Health, the rising trend of vaping among teens can have negative impacts on their health. Learn about the risks of vaping, what they, why they've become popular among teens, and how to help teens stay away from it. Community noted that youth vaping has declined more than 60% since 2019. So this lie about a rising trend, sorry, that can't happen on Twitter X. You're going to get community noted. Ah, yes, the ENCA discussion. Vaping hasn't proved effective for quitting smoking health experts. Well, sorry, you got community noted because Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group, the gold standard of systematic reviews, says that there's high certainty evidence that e-cigarettes with nicotine incre increase quit rates. ENCA can't get on Twitter and lie anymore and say that vaping doesn't help you quit smoking. Don't, don't look at all this science and data over here and, and ignore the community notes. We're gonna, st <laughs> we're gonna stick by this lie. I don't even know who this chud is. Ian Wiseman, the nicotine and e-cigarettes can impair an adolescent's brain development. In addition, the aerosols that those who vape breathe can contain cancer-causing chemicals and heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead. Holy shit, crazy. Oh, wait, no. The first sentence is a direct quote from the article by John Patrick Allen. It links to the Health and Human Services. The page at the Health and Human Services does not include the word impair or brain as implied in the statement. The nicotine and e-cigarettes can't impair an adolescent's brain development. And they community noted it with science from the Department of Health and Human Services that he was presenting completely disingenuously. We can skip this one. Raja Krishnamurthy, even though this is one of the more satisfying ones, more than half of the students say they use Elf Bar, a company that evades a ban on e-cigarettes. No, sorry. More than 50% of students do not vape Elf Bars. 56.7% of the 77, 7.7% of students who vape reported using them. God, I love community notes. And my most recent God, I love community notes Harvard Health, what a disgrace. Popcorn lung is a rare condition that results from damage to tiny air sacs and passages in the lungs. Experts say it's possible that using e-cigarettes and vaping can cause popcorn lung. Harvard Health, Harvard Health propping up possibly the most debunked moral panic argument against vaping that has ever existed. And look, Readers added context. Popcorn lung is actually bronchitis obliterans syndrome. Uh, the chemical of concern is diacetyl, which most vapes don't contain. Cigarettes contain more diacetyl than vapes and haven't caused popcorn lung. Cancer Research UK says you can't get popcorn lung from vaping. Harvard Health got fact-checked. They tried to lie on Twitter, Twitter X, and then they got fact-checked and they got community noted. And then so what did Harvard do? Harvard 
started blocking everybody pointing out the community note. Even if you just went on there and went, whoa, you got a community note, blocked, blocked. Everybody got blocked by Harvard Health for just not even being combative, not being argumentative, just pointing out, whoa, you guys got a community note. Sorry, that's going to be blocked. So what did Harvard do? Well, they deleted the tweet. Of course they did because they got caught lying. But what they didn't do was delete the article that they linked to on the healthharvard.edu website. The article is still there, still up, still lying to everybody that reads it. All things considered, Harvard, with everything that you're going through, I don't, this isn't, this can't be a good look. This can't be a good look. It's funny because Harvard is, I think, the last major like learning, collegiate learning institution in America that is still firmly, firmly against vaping and still firmly, firmly against harm reduction. Brown University, Yale University, Michigan State University, all their schools of public health are, are all about vaping. They're all about tobacco harm reduction. So I guess the question is, Harvard, who's wrong? Is Harvard right? And no one should be using e-cigarettes to quit smoking because they can cause popcorn lung, they can cause all sorts of damage to your body. No one should be vaping or Yale wrong. Or is the University of Michigan wrong? <laughs> Someone's wrong, someone's wrong. And if it wasn't so depressing and actually costing people their lives, it would almost be a little bit funny. So yes, according to my title, popcorn lung is real. It's a very real thing that has killed people. Does anybody who smokes cigarettes got popcorn lung? Eh, no. Has anybody who's ever vaped ever <laughs> got popcorn lung? No. Can vapes cause popcorn lung? No. Then why does Harvard feel like it's okay to get on the internet and just lie to everybody? That's all I had to talk about. Nope. We got, I'm sorry. We got one more last thing. Sorry. News is running long. Last week, we talked about FDA getting, you know, huh, I did the dumb thing. FDA got their little bottom spanked really, really, really exorbitantly hard by the Fifth Circuit Court judges. Arbitrary, capricious, the whole nine yards. FDA is honestly in a lot of hot water right now. They're running the risk of sounding like my mom. They're in a lot of hot water right now. And one person I wanted to hear from that I didn't hear from during the whole FDA thing, Brad Radu. Let's hear from Brad Radu, University of Louisville, harm reduction guy for, for decades. Harm reduction guy longer than any of us have been vaping, longer than any of us have been a harm reduction guy. An article in the LA Times, January 2nd, bemoaned the thousands of new flavored products pouring into the country from China. It claimed nearly all the new products are disposable e-cigarettes, according to sales data gathered from gas station, convenience stores, and other shops. The products generated $3.2 billion in the first 11 months of this year. 2023. The response from Brian King, director of the FDA Center for Tobacco Products, was naive. Those committing illegal acts don't advertise their crimes, and those trying to import illegal tobacco products into the United States are no different. The FDA and our federal partners are using tools like import alerts to keep these illegal tobacco products at the border and to deter countless others. This is a grim green side note, but is it the Food and Drug Administration's primary function is to act as like a, the police, like border police. Couldn't they stop all these illegal imports to, by just regulating them? Dr. King ignores history. A contemporary account of the first day of prohibition in the U.S., January 17, 1920, noted... Canadian liquor in quantities from one gallon to a truckload is being hidden in the northern woods and distributed by automobile, sled, and boat on snowshoes and skis. How, is how do we stop prohibition? How I don't know. How Where did this illicit market come from? I don't know. How are all these Chinese disposables coming across the border? I, I have no idea. It's so bizarre. Mystery. Neither Brian King nor his FDA colleagues are going to stop the illegal vape tsunami. When the FDA issued a toothless warning letter last May to the Chinese maker of Escobar's e-cigarettes, it failed to note that the product's name is a salute to one of history's most successful illegal importers, 
Pablo Escobar. My readers, meaning Brad's readers, will recognize another tobacco prohibitionist in the LA Times article, Stanford University's Bonnie Halpern Flesher. That's right, I've criticized her previous research, but here she comes across as a realist. FDA whacks one product, and then the manufacturers get around it, and the kids get around it. It's too easy to change your product just a little bit and relaunch it. Based. Sorry, that is based Bonnie Halpern Fletcher. Even though she's awful, that one thing she said is very based. Halpern Fletcher wants all vapes banned for the children, foreseeing a vaping apocalypse. If we continue down this path that we're on, we're just going to have new and continuing generations of young people addicted to nicotine. Oh, my good Lord. Yes, regardless of what the FDA or anyone does, some teens and young adults will become addicted to nicotine. But what as shown in the chart below, very few will die from nicotine over the next 30 years, as almost none of the youth today smoke cigarettes. They just don't. FDA created just a, a flourishing black market, just flourishing black market. They created it and now they get to spend all their time enforcing on the black market that they created. I don't know how that's not like the most plainly transparent, obvious thing that, that's been going on in the US. Blows my mind, blows my mind. And it kills me especially when we tell people like, well, there's gonna be a big black market, there's gonna be a big black market, there's gonna be a big illicit market, and then we just get written off going, no, 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 that's crazy, there won't be an illicit market. And there always, always, always is an illicit market. Okay, I think that's actually it. I'm gonna put links to literally everything I talked about, including those really important call to actions for Florida and Michigan. I don't know uh, exactly where we are right now in the vlog, but I hope it's been good. And I'm throwing it back to desk guy, but probably super chats. You know, it's just probably super chats. Desk guy, go. Hey, it's desk guy back here today. Thanks, news guy. Wow, that was really good. Really good. Really informative. Lots of stuff going on. Michigan, Florida, community notes, Harvard Health. It's just, it's just such a weird coincidence. Harvard Health, you see, it's weird because that's where Mike Bloomberg went to college. And that's where Mike Bloomberg's money goes, is to the Harvard Department of Health. That's weird. It's weird that they're so anti-vaping. It's almost like they received billions of dollars of influx in cash and then suddenly just became anti-vapers. It's weird. It's like American Heart and American Lung, like, kind of did the same thing. American Heart used to be pro-vaping. Does anybody remember the brief period when American Heart Association was pro-vaping? It lasted about a month. It lasted about a month, and then Mike Bloomberg gave them a bunch of money, and then they're anti-vaping. It's crazy the way that works out. So many, so many coincidences that happen in the world of tobacco control. Anyway, like I said, I'll have links to literally everything I talked about, including that great Brad Radu piece. Check it out for yourself. But right now, let's see what's happening on the Super Chat land. Okay, we're gonna sing happy birthday in just a second, but Rick, Rick, I love your shit, brother. Rick just said, I love your shit, brother. I uh, did, thank you. I love your shit, Rick. Appreciate you being here. Gunny, Gunny, I, my heart goes out to you, Gunny. Got word on Tuesday uh, that my shop is closing at the end of the month. Landlord sucks. Rented our space to our main competitor. Fuck my life. Gunny. I'm really sorry to hear that, brother. I am really sorry to hear that. Uh, and I hate that it's it's not necessarily FDA like shutting your shop down. It's a landlord renting out your space. Damn, 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 Gunny. I'm sorry. I am sorry. If you need anything, let me know. Damn, Gunny, that's rough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you, bud. Fishy, uh, been here the whole time, just leaving work now. Yo, yo, y'all, happy vlog day. Hell yeah, Fishy, drive safe. Fishy, drive safe. If Earn's still driving, the Earn drives safe. Face meet, uh, said, guess. Guess what face meet said. Dry oatmeal. Thanks, face meet. I appreciate you, pimp. I hope you're doing well. Sex King Phil's here. He's just listening. That's good. 
Hudson married an iguana. All good. Love it. Yeah, Bloomberg is truly magical. Yeah, he can change reality just simply with money. But 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 the problem is the problem is he's losing really badly. Uh, it, it feels like he's winning, and I know it feels like he's winning because of World Health Organization and you know parents against vaping and e-cigarettes and and campaign for tobacco-free kids. But they're reaching the bottom of the barrel of what to do about vaping because Harvard Health reposting popcorn lung. In 2024, reposting popcorn lung? They are just rehashing and retreading everything that didn't work before. It's coming down to addiction. That's going to be the catchphrase of 2024 is it's not about cancer anymore. It's not about heart disease. It's not about stroke. It's not about emphysema, COPD, the myriad of diseases that smoking cigarettes call, you know, causes. It's not going to be about any of that. The key word is going to be addiction. Well, you're still using nicotine. It's the addiction industry. They went from <laughs> the cancer industry which they still are the cancer industry, but now it's addiction. And now we're gonna be mad at addiction just because it's addiction, despite any of the harms that may or may not be happening. It's a puritanical, moral, bullshit stance. Can I say that again? Bullshit stance. Bloomberg's incentive is he just thinks he knows better than you. When, when Mike Bloomberg was mayor of New York City, he wanted to ban large sodas because he thought people were too fat. That's right. He, in his infinite wisdom, went, my city's too fat and I'm going to ban large sodas. Ban large sodas in America. In America, he wanted to ban large sodas and it went over like a Led Zeppelin. Nobody was on board. He was on, he was in the New York Times dressed as like a nanny and they called him Nanny Bloomberg. Oh, fun police Nanny Bloomberg wants to take away our large sodas. That's it. That's why he doesn't want people vaping. He thinks people who smoke should be punished with quitting. Quitting is the punishment for starting your filthy habit. You shouldn't have an easy off ramp. It should be torturous for you. It should be difficult for you. That's part of the punishment. That's all. It's purely moral. It's purely a moral stance from Mike Bloomberg. P purely, purely. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, Earn, but I don't think it's just TikTok. I think it's just the internet in general because I don't use TikTok and my attention span is non-existent, non-existent. Just the other day, just the other day, I was in the car, I was listening to Spotify. They have that little release radar where they say, oh, here, all these artists that you like, they've released new stuff and here it is all for you. So I go, oh, great. So I start going through my release radar. I can't even get through one full song. I get through like 30 seconds of a song. Next, 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 next. I flip through music now like I flip through Instagram reels and it's melting my brain. It's actually melting my brain and I catch myself doing it and I don't care. That's the worst part. That's the worst feeling is when I'm just sitting on the couch flipping through Instagram and I notice that it's been an hour and I go, what am I even doing? And then I just keep doing it. And I don't even care. I'm like, ah, fuck, who cares? Let's waste another 20 minutes just flipping through Instagram reels, just flipping through Instagram reels. I think it's the internet in general that has just ruined our, <laughs> ruined our attention span. It's ruined my attention span. And the music example is a good example, but a worse example is the other day when I turned on a, the television because there was a show I wanted to watch, and then five minutes into the show, I got on Twitter. What am I doing? Where is my attention span? I can't watch a half hour TV show without needing to do three things at the same time. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. I will say, yeah, this is why music sucks now. TikTok is why music sucks now. TikTok is why music sucks now because bands and artists 
try to write that one little catchy beat melody chorus that will get used on TikTok so that it gets them all sorts of exposure. Except when a song goes on TikTok, it's like a thousand times worse than it ever was when the radio stations would replay the same shit over and over again. Because you just hear this, you, you hear it so much you end up hating it. So these bands were like, oh, we got to get our shit on TikTok so it goes viral. But then it goes viral. Everybody hates it. The internet, you know, we just kind of let it go and we just kind of let it do its thing. We're like, ah, just everybody can have access to the internet and let's just see what happens. Well, we, none of us have attention spans anymore. That's what happens. <laughs> That's what happens. And yeah, and no one cares. Eh, no. Actually, I would take that back. Music doesn't suck now. Music has always sucked. There's always been shit music. Always. You just got to find the good stuff, you know? You got to find the good stuff. Okay, guys. Hey, hang on. Let's sing happy birthday. There's some birthday people in the chat. There's some birthday people in the world. And we're going to sing happy birthday to them, at them, right now. Right now, we're singing happy birthday. What's up, contractor? Uh, we're singing happy birthday to Ray Buildable again, I think. Vicky Benji, Pat Poos, Trap Musing, uh, Frank's son and daughter, Frank's kids, the Frank's kids, Jim Bubba's son, George, Ethan, Red, Mike D, Twist, and Dean T. And Dean T. I think I got, I think that's everybody. I think that's everybody. Okay, let's sing happy birthday. <clears throat> Come on, you guys. We got root beer floats. Why, why don't you want to sing happy birthday? Yeah, shit music is good, though. Shit music, get, yeah. Shit music is what got me into punk and metal. I'm a, I'm a, I'm not the guy to talk to about music. I like all sorts of music and I'm really, really opinionated on all sorts of music, but I also don't like to gatekeep. And I find myself sometimes doing it with music and I have to tell myself, just let people enjoy things. I can't stand this trend of shaming people for things that they enjoy. What the hell is wrong with you? It's like uh, the, these Stanley Cups, right? Stanley Cups. Everybody's going crazy for these Stanley Cups. And then there's this whole like new subset of people on the internet that are like shitting on people who like the Stanley Cups. What the hell happened? Why don't you just let people enjoy things? Who cares? It doesn't concern you if a bunch of people like a Stanley Cup. Go let them like a Stanley Cup. Let them go crazy for it. Let them buy hundreds of them. Let them crawl over each other and battle each other for Stanley Cups. Who cares? Why do you care what other people like? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. Just let them enjoy it. Who cares? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And so I find I try to be that way with music too. I try to be that way with music too. And I used to be really, really opinionated, you know? I used to, my chemical romance, emo's lame, until it suddenly wasn't. And I went, oh, wait, my, my chemical romance is actually good. Oh, the used is good. Oh, all these bands that I thought I was too good for, they're actually good. I was just being a gatekeeping dick about it. So just let people enjoy things. I don't care. Enjoy whatever silly things you want. Buy all the Stanley Cups you want. Buy 50 of them. If 50 Stanley Cups is going to make you happy, then buy 50. Buy 100 of them. Just let people enjoy things for the love of God. Okay, now, speaking of enjoying things. Fid Fidalgo? Fidalgo's birthday? It's Fidalgo's birthday, Addy? Fidalgo. I don't know who that is. But Fidalgo's gonna get a uh, yeah, uh, damn happy birthday. Yeah, look, and I agree. M M Casey and I have had so many, so many long conversations about music, and just you know, I, I grew up. I loved music. It was the only thing I really ever cared about. I wanted a keyboard when I was young. One of the first things my parents bought me was like a big keyboard with like full piano keys, and I would just whatever. I would just play music from listening to it. I would just play music from listening to it. 
I would hear like Motley Crue and I'm like, oh, I want to learn that piano part and I would just do it. And I'd hear another piano part and I'd go, I just want to learn that piano part. And I've always just learned from hearing. And then I was a musician and I was in bands and we were, you know, this, that, and the other. And then my wife, musician her whole life, great appreciation for music. She went to the Berklee College of Music. So we talk about music, constantly, constantly talk about music and like, you know, digging into like what, what makes certain music hit with people and not hit with other people. You know, like when I heard Queensryche, it really hit with me. But when someone else hears the same exact song, they would just go, oh, I don't care for it. I like this. And then it's something that I would never listen to. How does music hit with certain people or at certain times? Like, I used to not love this and now I dig it. I used to not love the used and now I dig it. I used to not love emo or hip hop and now I dig it. Suddenly at 46, I'm like, hey, this is actually all pretty good stuff that, that didn't hit with me before, but it's hitting with me now. It's, it's just interesting. It's really, really very interesting to me. And uh, again, this all comes back to just let people enjoy things. I don't care. I don't care. Even if you, even if, I was hanging out and I was like, oh, well, like, what are your favorite bands? And all you did was list every band I can't stand. I'd still be stoked for you. I'd be like, cool. That's cool, man. It's cool you like those bands. I hope that you like those bands as much as I like the bands that I like, because then we both like the things we like and, and then that's it. That's all you can do. Yeah, Dream Theater. <laughs> yep, yeah, Berkeley, Dream Theater. Just uh, you go to you go to Berkeley College of Music as a guitar player. You come back and you're gonna try out for Dream Theater. You're just John Petrucci, just just weird progressive atonal shit. Just weird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, music, Stanley Cups, fucking a. Just let people enjoy things. Let's sing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to them. Happy birthday, dear Ray Buildable. Also Mike D. Also Twist. Also Dean T. Also Vicky Benji. Also Pat Poos. <laughs> also Trapped Musing. Also Frank's Kids. Also Jim Bubba's son George. Also Ethan. And then also Red. And then also finally Fidalgo. Happy birthday to you. Skip around the room, skip around the room. You know what to do, you skip around the room. Skip around the room, skip around the room. You know what to do, it's your birthday. Green-eyed lady, happy birthday, green-eyed lady. Happy birthday to green-eyed lady. Happy birthday to green-eyed lady. Skip around the room. Now you skip around the room. Skip around the room, skip around the room. You know what to do, you skip around the room. Skip, 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 skip around the room. It's your birthday. What? If, why would you not skip around the room on your birthday? It's your dang on birthday. Happy birthday, you guys. Happy birthday. Skip like it's your, <laughs> skip like it's your fucking birthday. Just skip, you know. <laughs> Just <laughs> uh, skipping on my birthday. Let's uh, let's change gears just a little bit. We're gonna do some retro vaping. This is some this is some real this is some real heck ass retro vaping. Almost male call tribal Buddha, almost. But first we have to do a retro vape. And we have to do this retro vape because, damn it, it's just been long enough. And uh, I, I wanna do one. So retro vapes, right? I've been in vaping for 15 years now. A lot of us have been in vaping for, for somewhere around those time. It's I feel like most people, at least in this chat or that, you know, that I talk to, have been at this 
six plus years, seven plus years. Sometimes we get into the eight, the 10. I know there's a few like 14, 15 year people. I know Travis, hey now, he's been at it 15 years, same as me. And it's gone. We've evolved so many different directions that that the vape space and all these products just end up not making any sense. It's like we just, I was talking to Beecher about this recently. We just, we love incest and I don't know what it is, but it's like, oh, we got tanks and then we got sub tanks and then we can put those sub tank coils in a boro, you know? And then now we have boro bridges that go inside RTAs that go on mods. And then you have other, you know, you have RDAs, <laughs> you have RTAs, and sometimes the RTA is rebuildable, and sometimes it's a coil head, and sometimes it's a billet bridge on the inside. We, we, we want to use everything with everything. We put disposables in a boro, for God's sake. Whoever's genius idea that was, disposables is going to put a disposable in a $300 mod. Doesn't make any sense. It's out of control. We just put everything with everything. We're like, no, I want to do series mouth to lung. It's like, no, nah, you know, some of this. So I will say that all, all over all of this time, I know. And then sub tank of man, I, a sub tank of man, I, just out of nowhere. A sub tank of man, I, I, I enjoy all of these different ways of vaping. I mean, even if you just look through what I've been vaping, there's pods, there's drippers, there's boros, uh, there's coil heads, there's dual coil stuff, single coil stuff, mechanical stuff, regulated stuff, tanks, and I like it all. RDTAs, tanks, dripper, I just like it all. But for a while, I thought I had found my end game. Detail by design, 10 years for you? Hell yeah, 10 years. Mallory. Mallory, you make an excellent point. <sighs> Cheers. Well, my screen was just blacked out right there because dangle clacks, you know. Yeah, just a little bit more. Does anyone else ever do this on your coldest water bottle? It also might say uh, sponsored stream uh, or that there's a paid promotion in the stream. It's this. I put that on every stream because I use the coldest water bottle and I'll have a link in the description if anybody wants to pick up their own coldest water bottle and put stickers all over it and have, you know, the, the greatest insulated water bottle in the history of insulated water bottles. Maybe not in the history of insulated water bottles, right? But, you know, you can get a coldest water bottle. Cover it in stickers. Help yourself out, helps this channel out a little bit. Now we're going to retro vape. And so the thing that we're going to retro vape here, hang on, let me dump this out. Oh, baby. Uh, I don't think we've done this in a really long time. It's been at least two years since we've done this. I'm going to get that out. For a long time in vaping, I thought that I had found my my, you know, my, my end game. I thought I had found my end game. It's I, when I discovered these, it's all I wanted to vape. I thought this, this is the future of vaping. Really? I thought this is the future of vaping. And what I'm talking about, let's see if we can even see this right here. Yeah. So one of the dangle clacks tonight is that we don't have a uh, up close camera. This is about as good as we're going to get with an up close camera tonight, just because, you know, like I said, this dangle clacks happening. I don't even have a floating head. Is that it? No, nope. that's another chest shot. Great. How about this one? Hey, so here's what we got. See this? a cardamizer. You know where this is going? Inside of a cardo freaking tank. I got two of those 64 ounce same colors as yours. Pink 32 ounce for my sister. Black 32 for my son. Red. Oh yeah. Oh right on Ray Ray. Hell yeah. The code gets you a discount. The code gets you a discount and uh, and helps uh, and helps support this channel. 
Cardamizer. Cardamizer tank. Has anybody in here vaped? Luke, have you vaped a motherfucking Cardamizer tank? Fucking Ford Ranger. Yeah, so this is a Cardamizer tank. This is the original uh, end game of Grim Green. I thought this is what I'm going to vape forever. I tried to find an era appropriate device to put this on. Couldn't. Couldn't dig down far enough into the stash, so I got an MVP4, which I believe only came out like five or six years ago. But I figured an, an, an Inakin MVP with a Cardo tank would be like the, the retro vape. The retro vape. This was, Vicky Benji, you are in for a treat. Because these are some Bogue. Good Bogue cardamizers. And if you look close, I can't get too close to the camera, but there's a little hole right here. Once upon a time, we had to punch our own cardos. In fact, there were devices that were sold, and I owned them, that were specifically for punching holes in your cardamizers. You'd, you'd put your cardamizer in like this tube, and there'd be like a screw, and you'd screw it down, and it would screw in and punch a hole. And then you'd screw it back out and you'd have two little punched holes in your cardamizer. I used to take a Dremel to my, to my cardamizers and cut slices in them because I thought that wicked better. I would like cut a big slice in both sides. I thought, oh, that wicks so much better, you know? Oh, it wicks so much better. But really, this cardamizer tank, it's no different in my eyes than the coil heads that we have nowadays because it's just polyfill with a little coil inside, and then that's it. You could shrink this down and put it inside of a coil head, and then you'd have like a, a, you know, a sub tank, like almost the sub tank. And to fill these up, these were empty. They were just full of polyester from top to bottom polyfill. So to fill them up, let me see if I can uh, get a better uh, shot of this here. You know, uh, I really want to see this. We would take our cardamizer condom, cardamizer condom. They came on both sides of the cardamizer. You take the longer one and you fill it with liquid like that, about that far. And then you plunge your threads into this liquid and the liquid is going to squonk right up the center hole, right up the center hole. I'm going to push this in here. It's like a syringe. You see it comes right up the top. And then you, you, you pull it out. And you let it sit for a second and soak in. You give it a little twist. Push it back down. Let it get flooded to the top. Pull it back out. There was a thousand different methods for how to correctly saturate a cardamizer. This was... You know, I mean, come on, in vaping, this was like, this was peak technology at one point. Peak, peak technology. There was the, uh, I don't know, I don't know if anybody's been around since cardamizers. Does anybody remember the Terran spin method? The Terran spin? Get some more liquid in here. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just let it sit with a bubble on top and then you can watch the bubble go down and it'll, you know, it'll like start soaking into the polyfill. Oh, that's tall. That's like surface tension right there. Surface tension right there. I used to vape ego cardamizers back in the day. Yeah. I used to vape uh, cardamizers on an ego, ego twist all the time. That was like my favorite, my favorite, favorite like casino vape. Cardamizers, dude, cardamizers. Has that gone down at all? A little bit. Okay. Yeehaw. And then get some uh, paper towel here. Kind of have to, you know, get the excess out. Still a little bit. That's okay. You can flick it out. And then now, so I'm going to toss that little bit of liquid. And then so now this thing was invented. This is, ooh, I'm sorry that my fingernail is so disgusting right there. That's super gross. 
This little number was invented. I had a Cardo tank on a Chi Yu, Metal Morrissey says. A Chi Yu. <laughs> yeah, that's old school. You see this? This is a Cardo tank filler. It's just a piece of white Delrin slashed whoop, like that, O-ring on the bottom, so that this can go into your cardamizer like such. And then you can put it through the bottom and not tear up any O-rings and your cardamizer kind of goes right inside. And then, and then, right now, you see you have an opening to fill up your cardamizer. So I can take my liquid right here, bleh, I'm not gonna do a shit ton, but bleh my liquid in there and then finish pushing the cardamizer through. Boop like that, and then <laughs> you can attach it to a device. And 10 times out of 10, your cardamizer just spins on these O-rings. That was always the issue. You see twisting this, the cardamizer's not turning. It's just spinning on the O-rings. So I had to use this to tighten it down Take that off. Let's see if we're gonna read a resistance here. Two ohms, 2.2 .2 ohm cardamizer. Two point, uh, 2.2 ohm cardamizer. And then when you wanted to refill it again, you'd have to take your adapter, put it on here, pull the tank up so that there was an opening, bleh, pour your liquid down there, shove the pink tank back down, take this off, it was a little bit cumbersome, but damn it, it just vaped so good. It just vaped so good. I remember I have a very, very vivid memory of driving back from the very first VaporCon, and I had a, uh, I had the that big, what was it called? The BAM. I had the BAM mod, big green guy textured neural nubbins. It looked like a big aluminum dildo or something. It was just really weird and textured. And then I had a big sub uh, or a big Cardo tank on top with 12 milligram, 18 milligram, pink spot, pink spot. And I remember driving and vaping that and thinking, this is the greatest vape I've ever had. This is the greatest vape I have ever had. <laughs> it's all I wanted to vape. I remember thinking nothing's ever going to be better than this. Nothing's ever going to be better than this. I was worried. I was like, there's never going to be more innovation in vaping. We've reached the pinnacle right now. Cardo tanks are the pinnacle, are the pinnacle of, of vaping technology. Okay, so the lowest this goes is six watts. So for two ohms, two ohms, okay? <laughs> 2.25 ohms. Let's get, uh, can we throw an Oleg on here? That would look era appropriate. Yeah. Boosh. Would you just look at that retro setup? We got a modern Oleg drip tip, old MVP, old, old ass Cardo tank. Stiff draw. I saw some bubbles just go into the Cardo. A sub tank of mini. A sub tank of mene. Well, for being late, Cicero, you got to sing the sub tank mene song. A sub tank of mene. A sub tank of mene. Six watts. Six. Okay. Damn. Uh, actually, a lot more flavor than I thought there was going to be. Uh, so let's. Eight watts, eight watts, 4.2 volts. Woo, that's a lot. That's a lot. It, it vapes exactly as I remember. Oh, good Lord, exactly as I remember. Ah, Satilla, are you ever going to review the Smock Pro Master and the Master Box? I've been wanting to buy one until you reviewed it. Are you talking about the Novo, Smock Novo Master Kit? Is that what you're talking about? 
Because I would hold off. Yeah, Smock Novo Master and Master Box. Just ho hold your horses there. Hold your horses there, Luke. Smock is uh, Smock's struggling a little bit at the moment. These these new uh, Novo heads uh, aren't as good as I think that they think that they are. Okay, that pod is undeniably vaping better than this by a mile. Although, I kind of can't believe how good this is vaping. I want a shorter drip tip. I just do. Don't know why. Can't stop me. Will you work? What up, oh, tugboat? Hell yeah, tugboat drip tip. Yeah! All right. What up, tugboat? This might need a little bit more wattage, honestly. I'm going to go to eight and a half watts, and I think that's where this is going to end up. Now, I don't know if you noticed that this Cardo tank had slots cut into the side. That was to allow airflow to your 510 connection because your airflow was literally coming through that hole in the bottom of your cardomizer. It's going through a slot, down past threading, and then around and up the bottom, and it just makes the airflow bad. It's tight. It's, it's squeechy. Is that a word? Squeechy? Do you hear this? This is what I would describe as squeechy. This feels sounds squeechy. Feels squeechy. This is good. This is a good vape. Cardo tanks were good. Cardo tanks were good. I needed to know. <laughs> I needed to know if Cardo tanks were still good. It's not great. It's not great, but it is good. It doesn't hold up to like, honestly, a lot of modern vapes. Like that smock pod I just picked up, the Novo, the new Novo, vapes exponentially, exponentially better than this. Better flavor, better airflow. It's smoother, it's more flavorful, it's crispier. The flavor is severely lacking in this cardamizer severely lacking in this cardamizer wow not even with a lung i can't get any good flavor troy if it, listen we, we're we might be able to learn we might be able to do the teabag trick bro we might be able to do the teabag trick let's tr let's plan on that this year I'm going to try to track down some old atomizers that had cartridges, and then we're going to do the teabag trick. We're going to do teabag trick, maybe to be less squeechy than this. Yeah, I mean, it was good enough to keep me from lighting up a cigarette, but, you know, when I think back to the early days, to like, let's say 2009 through 2013, to quit smoking with vaping back then was really a struggle. You really, really had to want it. You had to really, really, really want it back then because everything was dangle clacks. Everything was dangle clacks. Nothing worked as it was intended to. No liquids tasted like they were supposed to. No hardware worked like it had intended to. We had to modify and cut and clip and stuff and do things to every piece of vape gear that came out. But because of the community, I think, because of ECF, I think that's what was one of the more successful things is I could get on ECF like every day and just see people troubleshooting things and, and, and ask questions about like, uh, I got one atomizer that works really well and the other atomizer, it's really, really weak. You know, and people were giving tips and doing tricks and saying, well, try this and do that. And we got this thing. And if you cut it and you stuff the thing and you can do the pyramid tea bag and then it'll vape. And you, you had to earn it. You had to earn it. Today, 
We could just fill up a pod and vape and it's magical. It's, it's beautiful. It's like, it, it's the most effortless, rewarding, like satisfying vape ever. You could, and you don't even need to do that. You could just pick up a disposable. It's way out of reach. You could just pick up a disposable, just literally pull out a plug. I think about that all the time when I use, when I think back about how we used to have to vape and how it was just really, you had to earn it. You had to earn it. And that's why rebuilding became so popular because it put the consumer back in control. You know what I mean? We were getting these products from China. It was like, these atomizers are shit. These batteries are shit. These mods are shit. Okay, so Americans took flashlights and turned them into mods and then rebuildable dripping atomizers. And it's like, okay, well now we can build our own coils and we can wick it and we can make our own juice. And this is consumer driven, you know? Your date was 2011 dual using and June 24th, 2012, your last cigarette. Never had to use the tea bag, but I do remember the CE4s. Yeah, those CE4s. J tanks, oh, J tanks, clearomizers. You, you had to earn it. You really had to earn it. That was, you know, that's when I was, I was dual using for about a month. I was the dreaded dual user for about a month, for about a month. Yeah, most angry pirate, the map tank. Remember the map tank? Map tank was like the, the first like hypey tank that I've ever seen in the vape space. Most hypey tank. If you put the Cardo tank on a squonk without a bottle, you can get more airflow. Yes, Dalton Beaver. I used to rock Cardos on my squonkers all the time. I loved it because you didn't need a tank because of the squonk bottle. I could just put a Cardomizer on my, uh, on my, uh, the name just escaped me. It was like the first squonker that came out. It wasn't the monkey box. It was not the wet box. It was that yellow and black number that was aluminum. Raven Vapes bought it for me. Can't think of it. Oh, I'm so mad. I, like I can't even think of a, a letter. Like a book d d e r. I can't even think of it. But it was a little squonker. And I would just put a cardamizer on top and then I would take off the drip tip. I'd put a cardamizer, I'd put a drip tip on the cardo. I'd pull off the cardo drip tip. I'd squonk the bottle until the liquid came to the top and I would just hold it there. And then I'd let go and watch it pull all back down. And I knew that I could get like 20 good mouth to lung rips out of one squonk. Rio, 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 triple, triple, ho, 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 ho. Good job, Rio. Yeah, that's the one. That's the ticket. The Rio. The Rio from Rio's Mods. Loved it. Sorry, Raw Chuck, I saw that you were in there too with the Rio. Rob, you were in there with the Rio. Yeah, the Rio. The Rio with a cardamizer. Amazing. Amazing. I loved it. Mouth to long, loved it. I was, cardamizers kept me from rebuildables for a really long time longer than it should have. Yeah, but uh, there was the monkey box as well. And before the Rio was the Missy wet box. And the Missy wet box was just a plastic modded, uh, it was like a battery, you know, a battery container. Okay, well, the good news, the really good news is I have a bunch of cardamizer tanks and cardamizers, pre-punched 510 cardamizers, if let's say anybody in my yo yo Patreon, Cool Kids Club would be interested maybe in trying out a cardo tank, it could be discussed. It could be discussed. I like to share the love around. And while I'm mentioning my Patreon, I might as well mention my Patreon. I have a Patreon. It's right there. There's a link in the description. You can join up. Um, we hang out every Thursday. We're trying, I'm trying to fit more hangs in, but I can't think of a time to do more hangs. But I want to do more hangs because we do hangs every Thursday after the vlog until all hours of the night. Aren't these people look like people that you want to hang out with? Don't you want to hang out with Mike D? Sea Moose? Huh? McGurgle Slurp Emporium? Megs? Look how loud she's being. 
Yep. Ray, you don't want to hang out with Ray? Anyway, you can hang out with us and, and so much more. You get access to the paid Discord. You get access to a super secret Instagram account where we give away boosh boxes literally every Wednesday. It's good times. There's no obligation. I'll have a link down in the description of this video. But that's it for retro vaping. Cardo tanks, you know? <laughs> it was just the peak of technology, and I can't get over how I thought that this was just going to be the last thing I ever vaped. Look how long my hair is getting. We might be going full skullet this year, guys. I almost shaved my head the other night. Let's uh, let's check back in on the Super Chats real quick, see if anything came in. And if not, it's mail time. Too long. We're running long. Oh, there are some Super Chats. Oh, you guys are too nice. J <laughs> ah, Lee. It's good to see your face, Lee. Not the real Gerard Butler. Just says dry mayonnaise. Dry mayonnaise mayonnaise and a dry mayonnaise to you lee not the real gerard butler i miss you man i hope you're doing good i know you're doing good i don't even need to question it you're 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 doing good mike d uh these chat things hell these chat things here well they're just super i tell you <laughs> mike d appreciate you pimp hope you're doing good uh Mike D, me and Mike D and Frames Janklin, I already told this story. We went to uh, Knott's Mary Farm, just the three of us. Had a great time. Rode roller coasters, just, you know, had shed time, ate good food, goofed off. Super fun times. Mike D, it's, it's been a pleasure getting to hang out with you. The great Seamus, that is very gracious of you, Seamus. Uh, I just got to thank you. I got to say thank you for bringing up the concept of gatekeeping. The years go by, uh, and the more it gets discussed, I realize all those times I gatekeep things from others. Yeah, exactly. And like, damn, just let people live. Exactly. Exactly. There was a real issue in vaping with gatekeeping for a number of years. We Thankfully, we got away from that because we had, you know, other really important things to focus on like taxes and PMTAs and flavor bans and stuff like that. But for a while, even in the vape space, there were gatekeepers of, you know, oh, you're not using a K fun. You're not a real vapor. Oh, you're not using a purge mech with a, you know, RDA. You're not a real vapor. We're real vapors. I'm a real vapor because I use carbon fiber, high-end mods and RTAs. I'm a real vapor. There was gatekeeping in vaping, bro. That's the goofiest shit. That is the goofiest shit I have ever heard of or seen happening in my, in my life. Gatekeeping in vaping. You're not a real vapor unless you're rebuildable. I got news for you. If you're not smoking cigarettes, and you're inhaling flavored nicotine vapor, I got news for you. You're a vapor. You try to, you know, you try, but truth be told, you're a vapor. You're a vapor. Okay, everybody. Okay. Uh, I think that, nope. Kennedy. Kennedy. Hey there, dude. I'm just Kennedy. Good to see you. you what do you mean? You're not just Kennedy. You're Kennedy. I, I, Kennedy, you've been in my chat, I feel like, for years now. Kennedy, you're you're part of the family. I know who you are, Kennedy. You don't need to introduce yourself to me ever. I know who you are. I hope you're doing great, Kennedy. It's good to see you too. Fa Q Tube. Uh, got a super chat. Uh, if there was even one case of popcorn lung linked to any kind of vaping, it would be all over the news, just like Evali. Yeah, and Evali wasn't even linked to vaping. So could you imagine if someone vaping got popcorn lung? We would never hear the end of it. We would never hear the end of it. Thankfully, no one will ever contract popcorn lung from vaping ever. So we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. I will say though, there was a few months ago, we talked about on this vlog about e volley 2 happening and how the narrative for illegal illicit Chinese vapes was going to start circulating towards fent, fentanyl, how 
oh, now these China vapes that are coming across the border, there could be anything in them. There could be fentanyl in them. Oh, I've heard some reports. Have you heard reports? Oh, there's reports. You know, I've heard there's reports of fentanyl being inside a disposable vape, despite being chemically and physically impossible to do. I heard, I heard, <laughs> I heard Florida. Oh, oh, A.G. Moody said that. Oh, Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody has already brought up the possibility that there could be fentanyl in your illicit Chinese vapes. There aren't, there can't be, but that doesn't stop people from trying to scare you back to smoking. <laughs> Andrew, so yeah, fuck YouTube. If there was a popcorn lung, if one case of popcorn lung was associated with vaping, yes, we, we would never hear the end of it. There hasn't been, there won't be, period. Andrew, that's very gracious of you. You just sent me back to 2010. Hell yeah, Andrew. That was the point. I kind of sent myself back to 2010 as well. I wish this was an MVP version one, and then the, whole, the entire retro vape would have really come together. Yeah. How does it hold up next to a disposable? Not even close, <laughs> not even close. The disposable vapes a trillion times better than this. Maybe a billion. Is that real? Can this vape a billion times better? Because it does. Yeah, that's, that just tasted like air. Honestly, it's guava jelly. It just tasted like air. This has such an intense flavor. It's not even close. Not even close, Ghost Bar. Not even close. Could you imagine, Andrew, in 2010, if we could have gotten our hands on even just like a Cali burn? If I could have had a Cali burn in 2010, get out of here. I wouldn't have struggled. <laughs> I wouldn't have struggled. I wouldn't have dual used. Would have been effortless. Effortless, I tells you. Slayers. How are you? in Australia. Uh, been a long time since I could catch a live vlog. Hope you're doing good, lad. Uh, the Aus the Vaping Australian. Shit, yeah, Vaping Australian. We're doing good. I'm doing better now that you're here. I hope all the Australians are doing good. You know, there's not a day goes by that I don't get sucked into Australian advocacy drama. Raging heart on. Hey, I love you too. Just today. Even just today on Twitter X, old Simon Chapman. I don't know if anybody's been keeping up with the Australian vape space, but Simon Chapman in Australia is essentially like the Australian Stanton Glance. Loves garbage, loves junk science, just loves sloppy science, just eats it with a spoon, just loves it, loves the prescription model, hates people who smoke cigarettes, hates addiction, loves junk science. That's Simon Chapman. And this, a video surfaced today of Simon Chapman from 10 years ago talking about vaping and how they're less harmful than smoking cigarettes and how there's, there, there's not even a debate about this. They are less harmful and anybody thinking otherwise isn't coming from a place of science. And then, oops, what happened, Simon Chapman? You used to be in favor of tobacco harm reduction and then suddenly you're not. Crazy, it's crazy. I didn't know that you could just, just purchase people's integrity, but apparently you can. <laughs> Simon Chapman, wow. Well done, Simon Chapman. Really, really protecting that cigarette trade. <laughs> really protecting that cigarette trade. Not unlike our FDA. F D S D A. Where did that come from? That was that was unexpected. Uh let's open some mail. Maybe. Okay, so uh, I don't have a lot of mail. But one thing I wanted to do, we're going to do this after the mail. I'm setting this up tonight. Once upon a time in the mail segment, I would set something up that came in, you know, uh, just whatever was in there. I would set one thing up and vape it like right away. And I haven't done that in a while, but I got this 
in the UK and I haven't built it yet and that needs to change tonight. I think we actually have the time. Oh shit, it's 6.30. I didn't think it was that late. Okay, well, luckily I don't have a lot of mail. We might still be able to do that and we still, still might be able to cram in two liquid tastings. Nine years, the janitor? Nine years now? Nine years now. It's crazy. And then, and then you know, and then what happened here? Okay. Uh, completely lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Australia, vaping, ah, something. I'm sure I was coming to a point. I'm sure something was coming to a point. Well, this is the end. This is the foamy end of the uh, root beer float. Still delicious. For the record, this is the best part of a root beer float. Is the creamy, creamy bottom. That's what she said. I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> who sent this? Who sent this? Lee! <laughs> Lee! My man! Lee, he says, uh... <laughs> well, it, it is the great mayo debate of 2023. Although it's bleeding into 2024, this is the great mayo debate of 2024. My patrons and I, for the last three weeks, three weeks, four weeks, have been, uh, it hasn't been quite that long, maybe three weeks, have been having a sort of an ongoing open discussion about mayonnaise. <laughs> mayonnaise versus Miracle Whip, you know, which is the superior condiment? We decided on mayonnaise and not all of us earn. It's okay. You can still like Miracle Whip and that's fine. Mayonnaise is the superior condiment. And so now it's kind of come down to like, all right, well, what's the best mayonnaise? So Lee sent me, uh, enjoy your mayonnaise. We got some blue plate mayonnaise. Enjoy your mayonnaise. It's better than any other mayonnaise. From not the real Gerard Butler, Lee. Damn it, Lee. Thank you <laughs> for continuing the mayonnaise. Um, I'm not going to try it right now. But I will say that Duke's mayonnaise, good, good. I've been a I've been a best foods mayonnaise person like my whole life. Uh oh, uh oh. The the sealer the sealer broke. I've been a best foods mayonnaise guy my whole life. Best foods, yeah. Sometimes craft, generally best foods. Because of the of the mayonnaise discussion. Um, I've been exposed to Duke's mayonnaise, which is <sighs> Duke's mayonnaise is good. Duke's mayonnaise is better than Kraft. Duke's mayonnaise, I think is better than, than the whole foods mayonnaise, better than blue ribbon mayonnaise. And now we're going to compare blue plate mayonnaise to Duke's mayonnaise. 2024, who knew that this was going to be the year of mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. I told a story to my patrons about uh, getting uh, losing first chair trumpet. I lost first chair trumpet because of mayonnaise. If you want to know that story, you better join my Patreon. I lost first chair trumpet. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, I don't have a lot of mail this week, you guys. This is the second to the end package, but we're already off to a really good start with a bottle of uh, blue plate mayonnaise. The only way that I can think to, to rectify this is at the next meetup, at the next patron meet, we're gonna need to get all the mayonnaises together. We're gonna need to get some fries or some chicken tendies or something to put mayonnaise on and we're going to have to have, yeah, see, Hellman's comes up a lot, Troy. 
Hellman's comes up a lot. I like best foods, but now I'm a Duke's guy. Duke's mayonnaise is, is just good. It's just real good. I'm really looking forward to this blue paint mayonnaise. I realize that's a goofy thing to say. What? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Ha! 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 Yeah. Get out of here. Wait till you see this. Ranch? Okay. Ranch, I think, well, listen. <laughs> We don't have time tonight on this vlog live stream to have the great condiment debate. We've had a few great condiment debates. Um, Fummy Tech, you know, you know that that brand, Fummy Tech. Well, you're never gonna believe it, but this, they are really, really leaning into that hookah. You know, kind of vibe. And so what this is, this is crazy. This is like a this is like a stand for your hookah. It has a hose and everything. This is actually crazy. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I can grab my hookah air. I can put it in here like this, right? Except I need to take this off. Oh, I better fill up this tank. I don't know what liquid was in here. What liquid was in here? We're going to throw baked bananas or butterscotch custard in here from Luscious. I don't exactly remember what was in here. But it'll go in here and then it fits in this stand and you attach a hose to it and it's like a legitimate, it becomes rather like a legitimate hookah thing. Hookah looking thing, I should say. Okay, so we put the tank in here. Can only go in one way. Pow. Then take this drip tip out. Yep, that goes on. Then it goes in here. And then... Where'd my hose go? Oh, here it is. And then the hose... Hang on, why are we doing this? This is what we should be doing. Look at this. And then... See how it's... Oh, that's just dusty. Does this unthread? Okay. There's O-rings in the bottom, so it like locks in there. And then I have to put this other cap on it. Yeah, it kind of locks in there. And then I can take a hose and jam the hose end on here. All right, I got this long hose now. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And then we have an ultra, ultra dorky drip tip that is this long thing. This long thing. So I could pull the hose through. Or maybe this is this is where this is supposed to rest. Oh, I see. Oh, this is how it's supposed to rest. Okay, so this all goes, wow. I mean, wow. That is next level. That, this is next level. This is next level. Look at this. The air hookah went in here, hose, hose, mouthpiece. This is heavy. So you can just leave it on the desk and then all I have to do is hold a hose. <laughs> what? It works. The flavor disappears. Just so you know. Just so you know. The flavor gone. Gonzo. But this is so slick. So 
Still lights up. Luscious, I wish I could taste your custard in here. Can't. Can't taste the dang thing. Um, despite all that, I love this completely. I don't have enough room for it to like keep it on my desk all the time, but I really want to. Look at that. What are you doing over there? Just quitting smoking cigarettes? Vapes way over here. Tanks over here, bro. Tanks over here. Ten banana stickers. Ten. <laughs> Ten. This is aluminum. This is metal. Thick rubber hose. All this is metal. Hard. Hard metal and it's heavy so even if i were to like move around it stays like within reason it stays plus very cold vapor bick very cold vapor Ve very excessively cold vapor Well, never getting rid of this. I'm gonna leave it across my desk like a hose so that at any point I can just grab it. Um, it has some flavor. I don't want you to think it's completely flavorless, but if, if I pull this hose off and just rip it off of this, Flavor. Flavor all day long. Tastes like banana, butterscotch, custard. Good flavor. But as soon as it starts going through this tube, all your flavor is lost. It's just gone. It's like extra long dorky drip tips kind of ruin flavor a little bit. Kind of ruin flavor a little bit. That just consider this like the longest dorkiest drip tip that's ever been the longest dorkiest drip tip i mean that is supreme dork level i will never find a dorkier drip tip than this it's just very airy it's very voluminous it doesn't feel very like thick or rich or dense or anything like that but it's very enjoyable. Like, I'm not a, a hookah person, but that is very enjoyable. All right, I think this is the last package from uh, the tribal one. There's no note. <gasps> is this a record? Tribal Buddha, is this a record? Holy shit. I didn't know I was going to get a record today. <laughs> oh, Trouble put I'm very excited about this. Dead. 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 Holy shit. I mean, get out of here. This is one of the best albums in the history of music. Skid Row, slave to the grind. Slave to the mother trucking grind. Oh my. Careful. Okay. Oh my. Tribal Buddha. I'm opening it immediately. I'm going to save. Let me save this sticker though.
fuck yeah, slave to the grind. All right, I'm a, I'm a freshman in high school suddenly, and I'm listening to monkey business. To me, it's just monkey business. Yeah. Skid Row, Slave to the Grind. What a glorious album. <gasps> I've never seen all the artwork before. Hey, that's cool. Oh, wait, that was in the CD. Yeah, that was in the CD. Slave to the Mother Truck and Grind. Oh, that's so sick. That is so sick. Holy shit. To me, it's just monkey bills nails. Yeah. That's what Sebastian Bach always did. Huh. A mud kick a kick. Huh. Was anybody into Skid Row? Was anybody into Skid Row or am I the only nerd that was really into Skid Row? I just, I think I told this story in the, in the hangs last night or last week. I want to see both records. <gasps> oh, you just love to see it. It's like orange and black swirly. So yeah, come on. I mean, come on. That's cool. Skid Row, man. Skid Row just hit with me. I was little 15-year-old, 14-year-old, 13-year-old Nick and uh, listening to Headbangers Ball and watching Skid Row be the youth gone wild. And I thought, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I am Skid Row. I am youth gone wild. Didn't. I mean, youth gone wild. Is there a better song than that that exists? I don't think so. That's it. That's King. That's the King song. Youth Gone Wild. Youth Gone Wild was like, I, it was a Cali burn in the bottom of my box. Must have taken that to the uh, post office. Youth Gone Wild, Skid Row, that first album came out and I was just like, yes, yes, Skid Row, Skid Row, Youth Gone Wild. It's like, oh, that's the beginning of my rebellion, you know? I am a Youth Gone Wild. I am. And then Slave to the Grind came out and I was, I remember me and my buddy, John, we were watching, uh, MTV headbangers ball monkey business comes on and it was the world premiere of Skid Row's new song monkey business. And I just, I thought, holy sh like my little mind was blown to smithereens. I just, I couldn't get enough. I could not get enough of Skid Row Slave to the Grind. Monkey business, get out of here. That video rules. And this is a good, 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 good album. Good, good album. I don't know. Should we add songs to the Getting to Know Grim Grain Spotify playlist from this right now? Uh, yeah, we should, right? <laughs> They're too good. Every song is good on here. I think we're going to do, uh, I don't know. Should we add songs? Should we add songs? You don't like cock rock? I mean, I, I, I jam on some cock rock. I can jam on some butt rock. Skid Row is, I don't know. You, you know, this was before this Skid Row was like before I ever cared about what was cool or anything. I just loved it. And I, I didn't care. I just thought it was the coolest shit ever. Yeah, 18 in life. I remember. Remember yesterday. I walk in hand in hand. Come on. Sebastian Bach. Good at, he was just a beast. Still is a beast. Tribal Buddha, thank you. Thank you for one of my favorite records of all time. This is awesome. Shit, yeah, slave to the mother truck and grind. Yeah, rad. I just, I want to keep looking at it. I want to end the stream and just go listen to it. <laughs> Should we add songs to the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist? We haven't. Here's the thing. Let's add songs. 
We're going to thank Skid Row, Slave to the Grind, and Tribal Buddha for this impromptu getting to know Grim Green. But little little 13-year-old Grim Green starting high school in love with Slave to the Grind from Skid Row. We would go on like um, concert band trips. We would go to Vegas to perform. We would go to Southern California sometimes to perform. We'd go down in the Valley in Douglas County to perform. If we were ever on a bus or in the car, I was listening to Slave to the Grind. I just was. I had a tape and it would just go front to back, front to back, front to back, slave to the grind, slave to the grind, slave to the grind, just over and over and over and over again. And I, I, I just, it was one of those things. I just felt like I could not get enough of it. Could not get enough of it. We need to do, yeah, if we did karaoke and they had this album anywhere in that karaoke, yeah, monkey business would be coming all out of me. Just monkey business. You wouldn't be able to keep it. You just hear that opening guitar. Bing, bing, bing. I would just start singing. Well, outside my window, there's a whole lot of trouble. It's so good. Oh, my God. It's so good. Desp so I think we have to put Monkey Business because it's the banger track on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. And we're going to take a deep track. We're going to take a deep cut. Boom. Right there. You see that song? Riot Act. It's uh, get the fuck out. Yeah, Riot Act. Riot Act and Mud Kicker are both bangers. In fact, the second half of this album is just bangers. But we're going to put Monkey Business and Riot Act on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. We haven't put any music on the Spotify playlist since April 2023. And that is completely unacceptable to me. Now, I haven't kept up with Skid Row they were one of the bands that, you know, you, you just lose track of. You just lose touch with. You go, oh, I loved this band until I lost track of them and then I didn't really care for Skid Row so much anymore. But I will always and forever hold the first two Skid Row albums very close to my heart. Very, very, very close to my heart. Yeah, Wasted Time. Listen, you could list any song on this and I would say yes. You'd be like, oh, Creep Show? What a hell of a song. I'd be like, damn right, that's a hell of a song. Right, damn right, that's a hell of a song. Slave to the Grind. Do we do Slave to the Grind or do we do Monkey Business? We got to do Monkey Business. We're going to add Monkey Business uh, to the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. I'll put a link down in the description. And it's just full of uh, only bangers. Only bangers. That's the rule is that only bangers can go on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. Uh, let me try to find the actual playlist. Oh, here it is. It's called GTKGG, The Jams. And I'll uh, put, it in, put in the link in the description literally right now. If you want to check out literally a, a whole mess of my favorite music that we've been talking about for years. Years. And I mean, and this goes, this goes from... This covers the gamut of music. There's stoner rock in here. There's death metal in here. Kiss, Rainbow, Clutch. We go through Megadeth and Mastodon and, and Metallica to Blink-182 to Iron Maiden to Corrosion of Conformity to Queens of the Stone Age. To, you know, Helmet and Dre and Cave-In and Fu Manchu and like, oh, this is a good playlist. Paramore, Guar, get out of here. You know it's a good playlist when there's Guar, Paramore, and Dr. Dre all on the same playlist. That's <laughs> and Caius, <laughs> and Caius, and Danzig. And so we just added Monkey Business and Riot Act. Tribal Buddha, thank you again. This is truly and honestly one of my favorite records of all time. And, and thank you. Thank you to my brother from another mother. I don't know what's in your record collection, but I'm buying you a record now. You can't stop me. You can't stop me, Tribal Buddha, Mr. Slave to the Grind. Hell yeah. Good mail. Yeah, good mail. That was a damn hell-ass good mail. We're going to do some liquid tastings, but, but, oh, wait, hang on. I saw a chat. Now I have to answer it. Hey, Nick. I'm looking to get a new vape pod, but I don't know what to get. I want something that's well-built, flavorful, and good battery life. What would you recommend? Uh, there's only one thing I would recommend right now. I don't even have it on my desk. What did I just do with it? G3, Caliburn G3. 
Caliburn G3. Caliburn G3, Cross Nano, any of the Cross series are really good. Those coil heads are bomb. Cross or Caliburn G3. I think the Caliburn G3 is like, it's, it's kind of killing the pod game right now. As far as like this form factor, this size. Taste the mayo. I need a vessel. I need a vessel for the mayo. I can't just eat mayo. Eating mayo raw kind of grosses me out a little bit, but if there's like a piece of chicken or something, then you can put as much mayo as we want on there. It's just a vessel. It's just a vessel for the mayo. Dude, cave in. Dude, don't get me started on cave in. I love cave in. Uh, oh, Beecher's here. Beecher's requesting a record store trip when you're in town. Easily done. We'll go down to Amoeba, kill it. We'll just buy the whole store. Just buy the whole store. Beecher, did you see this? Hookah? Hey, Grim, can you tell me that the storms can't get you? Storms can't get you. The storms can't get you. They just can't. They'll probably try, but they can't. That's my new favorite vape thing. That's my new favorite vape thing. So wait, hang on. What time is it? 7 p.m.? <sighs> Can we try to put this together real quick? I don't think it's going to take that long. And I've been procrastinating and procrastinating, but I think it's like a Lego-style clip-together type of thing. Oh, maybe it's a little bit more complicated than I thought. Oh... Yeah, it's like, uh, ha! That's cool as shit. That's cool as shit. Addy stack. It's even grim greened on the front. Now this came from, um, hang on. Uh, firstly, it was a pleasure to meet you at Vapor Expo UK. I'm writing this pre-expo, so I have no idea <laughs> if during the weekend I actually get a chance to speak with you. Uh, this is the Addy Stack. It's a brand new product on the vape accessory market. It's modular, stackable storage design system for tank strippers and batteries. 3D printed, made in the UK. Um, he was trying to solve his own problems. He says they ship internationally, um, and it's easy to do because this isn't liquid or hardware. It's just an Addy stand. Uh, we've included a special one-off set with your own unique branding, along with a number of sample trays and rods for you to test out and hopefully enjoy or stick on eBay. I hope not. Our starter sets are currently uh, about 15 British pounds. It's about 18 US bucks. Addy Stack is on the ground floor and we have plans for an extra large version, more tray designs, and even better storage capabilities. See, this is something that I genuinely, genuinely need to organize in my life. Flat cap, the flat cap vapor. So this 50 millimeter, oh. Oh, it's like a little erector set. So I could put four 80 millimeter posts in here, right? Is that the way this works? Can this go in here? Is it just press fit? Is it? Or is it threaded? Is that threading? No, it looks like it's just press fit. I might have to just, oh yeah, I can just kind of jam these in here, I guess. And then it can go like this. Oh yeah, oh shit, yeah. Oh, it just kind of comes together. Oh, I see. Yeah, Addy Stack. So then I could put boros down here. I could put batteries across the front. I could put toppers up here because there's holes for toppers. That's rad as hell. Okay, so I got two of them here. Oh no, there's these are inserts. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, I see, I see. So I can replace that with this or I could replace it with more atomizers or I could replace it with more this. Or I could put batteries on top and have atomizers down here. I have atomizers down here. Oh, okay. This is helpful. Uh, I'm going to use this. I'm actually going to use this flat cap 
Addy Stack. There's been so many times in this industry where I've been given things like this. And when I look around at my office, I always think I don't have a use for that. I don't have a use for that. I don't have a use for that. This I definitely have a use for a thousand percent. I have a use for, I need my life to be more organized <laughs> and I'm hoping that this will help me be more organized. I wish you guys could see some of the places that I keep vape gear. It would, it would sicken you. It would sicken you. You would be sickened, but wait, can I put a pod in here? No. Okay. Flat cap. If someone ever makes a, a thing like this that will just hold batteries for pods, you'd be my hero. You would save so much space on my desk. Save too much space on my desk. Oh, that's cool. All right, Addy Stand. That's awesome. Thank you, Flat Cap Vapor. I'm sorry it took me so long to finally get this out and built but I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and I need it and thinking about it and I think about it. But this is helpful. This is, I mean, one, two, three, four boros, four RDAs, one, two, three, four, five, six, 18, six fifties now have a home and aren't just gonna sit upside down on a shelf full of cotton and full of liquid. Is that four 18, six fifties? I mean, is its purpose 18650s? Oh yeah, look at that, 18650s right in there. Boop, just like that. They fit, yeah, they fit. Boop, 18650, just like that. Uh, that won't fit, that won't fit. I wonder how big uh, these have to be. What size this is for, rather. I don't even have a topper I can unscrew and put on there. That's depressing. It's all boros or, I mean, the dripper layer cake might fit in there, but I don't want to unscrew this. Have some, Ern. Have some. All right. Bitchin'. Hell yeah, flat cap. Thank you. That's cool as hell. Was that a pair? I'm just messing up all my batteries. All right. Well, I think what I'd like to do, liquid tasting. Let's do it. It's only seven. We could we could get two done before the end of the stream, right? Right? Come on, I need a little bit more enthusiasm than that, Michael Redfern. I'm just kidding. Shed time till it's bedtime. We in that sunshine state where the bomb ass hemp be? The state where you never find dance floor empty? Okay. It's time to randomly... Actually, let's check on the Super Chats real quick. <laughs> Don't know why I ran that bumper. Let's check in on these super chats real quick. Uh, the janitor <laughs> talking about popcorn lung. The janitor says, uh, I inhaled a piece of popcorn once. Does that count? Yes, totally. Totally. If you have a piece of popcorn in your lung janitor, then you have popcorn lung. You're going to, we're going to shit. It's all coming crashing down. <laughs> Oh, George boy. I, I love you, George boy. I love you. Hope you're doing good, George boy. Hope you're doing, I hope you're doing better than good. Hope you're doing kick ass. Fishy. Yep. The great sandwich mayonnaise debate. I love this community. <laughs> oh, and by the way, yeah, more seatbelt. Uh, I actually have a, a visual more seatbelt. Yep. More seatbelt coming right out of the vlog there or uh, on top of it. Now it's underneath it and we'll move it more seat belt. Yep. Everybody knows if your seat belts longer, it's safer. <laughs> Falk YouTube says I was into all eighties hair metal. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was too, I would say between eighth like seventh, eighth and ninth grade is when I really got into hair metal, a lot of hair metal, um, loved poison, <laughs> loved poison, loved poison, loved the crew, loved skid row. 
uh, like Cinderella, you know, every hair band, I had at least a couple jams that I really liked, you know, and I liked, uh, I, I just liked it. I liked the whole aesthetic, <laughs> you know, I, I liked all of it. I was a big fan of hair metal. It didn't make any sense to me. It was one of those things where it's like dudes wearing makeup and then, but girls are into these dudes that wear makeup and they're in glitter and CC DeVille looks cuter than this girl in the audience. I don't get it. Fucking poison. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. Just loved it. Didn't even care. Tribal Buddha, are you peacing out? Hey, I love you, Tribal Buddha. Thank you. I don't know if you're peacing out, but hey, thank you, Tribal Buddha, for the record. Cinderella. Hell yeah, Cinderella. Kicks. Uh, Rat. Uh, I don't know. What else off the top of my head? What other cheesy bands did I listen to back in the day? Rat. You ever listen to Rat? Okay. Well, if we're going to actually wind this stream down at some point. Is that too loud? We are going to need to do a, a, a very random liquid tasting. Yeah, Steel Panther. Steel Panther keeps it alive. Uh, I got into Steel Panther. As soon as Steel Panther existed, I, 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 I saw that they were like a throwback, you know, 80s metal band. Immediately a fan of Steel Panther. Immediately a fan of Steel Panther. You were, you were too punk for cock rock? Yeah. I was too cock rock for punk. That's okay. We eventually got there, you know. Eventually. I dabble. I dabble in, in most genres, you know. I'll, I'll dip my hand in some punk rock and rub it on my face a little bit, you know. And then I'll, and then I'll dip my hand in, in some cock rock and just rub that on my face. Listen, we have a playlist. The Getting to Know Grim Green playlist has punk and cock rock on it. So you know what you signed up for. Okay, so the first very random liquid tasting is going to be... Hang on. Looks like I'm going to Germany. Uh, thank you, everybody, for voting. And it looks like I'm going to Germany. So here we come, Germany. Here we come, Kent. Let's start a poll for the very... Very random liquid tasting. Uh, first up, we're going to have two. And then... And then... Okay, so a poll has been started in the chat. And before you even know what you're voting on. Here's what you're voting on tonight. First up, for your consideration, we have a lovely blend from Twisted Timmy. Event Horizon, Gourmet Cannoli, Drizzled in Blackberry Jam. Mmm! Nice! Messiah Prophet? I never listened to Messiah Prophet, Seamus. I know of them. Second, this is uh, FDH. This is uh, Kaz from The Hood. Playland. Cotton candy ice cream. So, cotton candy ice cream from FDH. And then lastly, we have a uh, delightful Franken Atticus pear peach. Franken Atticus pear peach. Small batch craft e liquids from Australia. From the land down under. Please vote. Please vote today. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote funky. If you don't vote today, then you don't get a float funky. It's a celebration. Mix them together. Twist his dick. Oh my God. You Event Horizon and Playland. You can, you can only vote for one. You can only vote for one. Oh, Event Horizon is really crushing it. Really crushing it. I had a feeling Pear Peach wasn't going to go very far, but I just want to taste it. It, it. it looks like a delicious flavor to me, so <laughs> I kind of want to taste it. Uh, pear Peach Pear from Juice Head is nasty. Ah, thanks, Ern. This is from uh, Frank and Atticus, though. You see that? 
<laughs> I'm just kidding, Ern. I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm just giving you some guff, you know. Peach pear from... Oh, don't tell me that it's a legacy. I have a feeling I'm really going to like this liquid. I, know, I don't think it's going to get chosen tonight, but... But... Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. It's It's not even... It's root beer float, Miles. We did a root beer float tonight uh, for everybody that doesn't consume any uh, alcohol. Just a just a good old fashioned root beer float. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote funk yeah. It's on your own you can't say that. Well, you know what? Sewer rug's not here, so it's a celebration. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. Just build more RDAs? Here's the thing. I mean, yeah, that is technically a solution. <laughs> it is technically a solution. Okay. I really think Event Horizon's going to win, so I'm going to start the preparations for Event Horizon, I have a, uh, a, a an atomizer right here. This is the legal. That's a uh, gold legal RDA. We're going to be putting it. Yeah. This is a good looking setup in my opinion. Legal RDA, gold legal RDA on the uh, Aegis Legend 2 banger banger of a device running real low ohms on here it's a 0.11 i don't see anything beating event horizon right now uh i have not tried the new luscious apple pie crumble yet i have not i i i'm i'm more than more than wanting to my shirt matches my vape mat you th what, you think that was on accident? This is grim green. <laughs> Nothing's on accident. Everything's deliberate. Except for the things that are on accident. And then those are actual accidents. Oh. You ever get a little carried away with your drippings? All right, let's knuckle this event horizon. Hmm. Here's the thing. Blackberries. Blackberry? Never been a vape flavor I've been super into. If I'm being 100% honest with you, it's just something, it's just a flavor uh, I've never super jammed on. No pun intended. All right, 84 watts. You ever drip while you're firing? That's the real boss move. And you get liquid hot magma just shooting at your body. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's Nico's 11th gotcha day. Oh, I didn't sing my dog happy birthday. Happy birthday to Schneeko. Happy birthday to Schneeko. Happy birthday to Schneeko. Happy birthday to the best dog that's ever existed in the history of dogs. Happy birthday, Schneeko. Damn. That's cool. That got me in my feels too, Pickle. That got me in my feels too. Event Horizon. Let's have our first uh, snort here. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to sit with this for just a second. I need to vape it more than a few times. And then, uh, and then I'll come back and talk about it. Oh, did she? Can we get the birthday girl in here? No, I'm just kidding. I'll be right back. I'm going to mute my mic.
Okay. I think I like it. I, I think I like it. I think I like it. Blackberry, as I said earlier, isn't generally like my favorite, favorite flavor. It's pretty okay. It's generally not my favorite, favorite flavor because it gets a little bit seedy. Yeah, I said it. It gets a little bit seedy and not like seedy, like, you know, I've got disposable vapes in my trench coat seedy, but like seeds. Whenever I taste a blackberry, all I can taste in the vape is seeds. I picture seeds in my head. That's what I picture, not the flavor. I just picture seeds and I, all I can taste is seeds. It tastes exactly like a blackberry cannoli. I don't know where this flavor combination came from. I've never had a cannoli with blackberry drizzle, blackberry drizzle jam on top of it, but it's a good flavor combination that works really well together. The cannoli helps the blackberry not be so seedy. It helps the blackberry be a little bit, uh, you know, a, a little bit more bright, I think. The cannoli, good. Crispy bakery cannoli with whatever that white cannoli filling is, that like sweet ch chocolate chips cannoli filling in the middle. I get the pure cannoli. I get cannoli with blackberry jam, just like Twisted Timmy says. I don't know how he does it. Timmy, you're a jerk. I don't know how you do it. Raspberry jam is so fucking on point on this one. You expect to have to pick seeds out of your teeth. Yeah, it's very, it's blackberry jam. It's blackberry jam, not raspberry, but yes, blackberry jam. It is a very, very blackberry jam. Very, very cannoli. It's not too sweet. I know sometimes I mention things getting too sweet. This ain't it. It's not too sweet. It's a good, nice level of sweetness. I have a bit of a sweet tooth uh, as it is anyway but I still don't like juices that are too sweet. This one, thankfully, nice and mild. I get some nice sweetness from the blackberry. That cannoli kind of rounds it out at the end. Sweetened whipped ricotta. Is that usually what's in the middle, Seamus? Who am I asking? Of course it is. It's the great Seamus. Hashtag switch. Hashtag switch. Well, I wouldn't say that vaping's dead in Southern California. Yeah, yeah, Timmy. Yep, yeah, good. It's good. It's getting better and better and better as I vape it. The cannoli and blackberry really go well together. Really go well together. All right. All right, Event Horizon. That's a winner. Has Twisted Timmy had a clunker yet? I don't think so. I think I've enjoyed, maybe Gulf Breeze isn't my favorite Twisted Timmy, but like the strawberry more than makes up for it. 21 grams more than makes up for it. The other Timmy flavors are like really good. Really, really good. The strawberry, I can't even tell you how good the strawberry is. This... Not quite strawberry, still real good, Timmy, still real good. Still real good. Now, still real good. Now, it's 723. I'm gonna squeak in one more random liquid tasting. This is just gonna be two liquids. These are Beecher's new liquids. Beecher, are you still here? Beecher, are you still here? Busting, Event Horizon, if you're into blackberry flavors, this is a top tier, top tier blackberry flavor. Top tier blackberry flavor. Blackberry, cannoli, it's creamy, it's crispy. That's good. But, but wait, there's more. It is, it's getting a little foggy here at Grim Green Industries headquarters and uh, my alarm's probably gonna go off soon, but, that means that we have an, we have one more liquid tasting to do. It's only 724. We got plenty of time. You see this? You see these? Event Horizon won by a landslide. Landslide, I tell you. 
Landslide. So uh, the second liquid tasting is going to be these. So we have uh, and something. <laughs> Two po two votes, two two questions, two options for your consideration. Coil turd, hex juice, cash, straight out of Indonesia, free base, non-salt liquid. You love to see it. I'm gonna hide my gross fingernails. Fried cookies, fried cookies, or Sonoran strawberry. Fried cookies. Sabino, fried cookies or strawberry, vote. Vote, vote, vote. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote. If you don't get to vote, then you don't get to vote. Cried cookies. Cried cookies. If we're not vaping fried cookies, well, listen. You know, I, I'm, I'm biased. I'm partial to strawberry, but I will respect, you know, I will respect the rules of the vote. You, you got to respect the rules of the vote. It looks like fried cookies is winning. It looks like fried cookies is winning. I will respect the results of the vote. I will respect the results of the vote while I sit back here and clean my fingernail because it's grossing me out so badly that I can't even look at myself right now. That's disgusting. I don't, I don't know why it's like stained. Maybe that's from the root beer. That's gross. That's gross. That, nope, I'm just cutting that finger off. I'm just gonna lop that finger off. We'll be fine. We only, I don't need a pointer finger. I don't need a pointer finger. All right, well, because the because it's going this way, I'm gonna uh, use, I'm gonna do my best magician hands here. We're gonna, I'm gonna just move this. We're gonna twist. Okay. Okay. Okay, ready? There it is. Cash! Love these bottles. Love the flat top 60 mils. Don't know why they never did this. Don't know why these didn't take off in America. These are awesome. And they're good for stacking. They're good for everything. Yep. Looks like this is the way it's going. I'm just gonna go ahead and end the vote. The fried cookies is more than halfway. More than halfway beating. So we're just gonna go fried cookie like, like our life depends on it. Let me turn down that seventh floor tango. That's a little bit out of hand. The knuckle test. What? What did I just taste? What did I just taste? Let's get... Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to use the hammer of God since that's kind of all I have sitting right here. Well, you know what's going to happen here. This is, uh, this is what we're tasting it on tonight. Hammer of God and a serpent rda with a fat fat five millimeter twisted timmy's coils in the middle how sick is that i forgot how much i absolutely f love this rda with a big fat single coil in the middle so we're just gonna go for it we're gonna put some baked cookies or sorry fried cookies on here big ass single coil these bottles are a beyond adorable urn. They are great. And you can like, do I have another one in here? I don't. Yeah, I do. Oat drips. Oat drips. Look at that. Stack bottles and stack bottles. You could stack them. You could stack them. Lord Pringles. Yo, yo, to ya. We're just doing our final random liquid tasting. We're doing some uh, cash fried cookies straight out of Indonesia. This is a 0.56 single coil. So what do you think? 50 watts? 60 watts? Mmm. 
Hmm. Ooh. Can hear that crackle happening. I can already like off the knuckle and just the the aroma right there. It tastes it, it's I'm, it's given me like honestly some oat drippy kind of vibes. Like it feels like it has an oat drippy kind of base to it. Feels like it has an oat drippy kind of base. Let's get the serpent full airflow like that. What the shit? Oh, I had it I had it upside down. That's probably why. Okay. And then. So many things to line up. <laughs> so many things to line up. Okay, I want to line up those first. Why can I not line this up very well? Ah, ah, ah! There you are. Yes, okay. Okay, serpent, big ass single coil on the hammer of God with some mother truck and fried cookies on it. 60 watts, 0.5. Boosh, what's not to love? See how this goes. Okay, okay. It is. This is pretty oat drippy. It's pretty oat drippy. It's like, it's the closest to oat drips I've had that's not oat drips. It tastes like oat drip cookie. That's all I can think of. It tastes like oat drip cookie. It tastes like if you made crackling oat bran into a sweet cookie. That's what this tastes like. It, it's like oats and honey and... I don't know what type of cookie it is that's being fried, but it, it's kind of tastes like a fried sugar cookie or something like that. Fried sugar cookie. Apathy. It is a little bit on the throaty side. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it is a little throat meal. <laughs> Throat meal, throat meal, throat meal. That's funny. Queen honey bunny. Woo. Yeah. Oat lackey. It, it's got that. I, you know, there's a certain, you can tell when liquids use similar bases, like once upon a time back in the day, like pink spot vapors, all of their liquids, no matter what, all tasted like they came from the same base liquid. Like there was a base formula and then they're like, we add raspberry to make it this, or we add this to make it that, or we add this to make it that. That's what this feels like. It feels like there's a base liquid that's kind of oaty drippy, kind of oaty drippy. And then fried sugar cookie on top of it, soft throat meal. It is a little bit throaty, but I think it's the, Macadamia? No, it's not like a macadamia. It's bizarre. This is a bizarre liquid. 
uh, flavor profiles out of Indonesia are always interesting. Always interesting. Some of my favorite liquids come out of Indonesia. Like that lunar, super lunar sweet mango. Oh, yeah. So good. It's so good. This tastes a little oat drippy. Oat drippy like a fried cookie. And if you've ever wanted to try oat drips, but you couldn't get it, well, then you still can't get this because it's from Indonesia. But you might be able to get that a little bit easier. Papa Jundi's are... are Connection to all things Indonesia. Yep, yep, that's good. I'd be really interested to see what my wife Casey thinks about this liquid. She has uh, some sort of super palate. <laughs> it, she tastes like the most subtle, weird little nuances of every liquid and, you know... It, she has a great palate, great palate. So I'm interested to see what she thinks of it. Oh, you never liked Pink Spot? Yeah, I got into Pink Spot pretty hard. We, I, I worked with Pink Spot very, very briefly till they turned out to be terrible. Till they turned out to be terrible. That was the first business deal I ever had. It was garbage. I'm just currently trying to large ID coil single in what is really a dual car. Miles. Person after my own heart right there. Big coils and things they don't belong in. Welcome. Welcome. That's like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Whoa, this, what do you mean this can't fit three and a half millimeter coils? Yeah, put them in there. <laughs> put them in there. She is. She's a super taster. She has pickle palate. She's the reason why cornflake sugar cookies so good. You're barging in. All right. You're barging in what to taste the fried cookie. Okay. Well... Uh, that's going to wrap up the very random liquid tastings. Let's check one last time on the super chats. I think there were some I forgot. I know there were some I forgot. Mick, Mick Blizzard, 10 years smoke free today. Damn, I love vaping. Hell yeah, Mick. 10 years. I mean, ah, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, that's a, that's beautiful. That's a glorious thing, Mick. 10 years. It's one of those things like, I, I think about this every time, but when I was a cigarette smoker, I never envisioned a time in my life when I wasn't smoking cigarettes. And I certainly never pictured a time in my life when I would be 16, 15 years smoke free. You know, and I never, you know, obviously never pictured a time in my life when I would be on the internet advocating for less harmful alternatives and harm reduction for people who smoke cigarettes it's bananas. Vaping, vaping rules. <laughs> vaping fucking rules. Uh, appreciate you, Mick. I hope you're doing good. Uh, Mike T, 206. Uh, I've healed the world, been crucified, mud kick a kick, here's mud in your eye. Yes. Mike T. Skid row. Skid row. We're, I'm listening to that as soon as the stream ends. I don't even... Casey can come in. We're just going to be listening to Slave to the Grind. Appreciate you, Mike T. F fellow fellow S Skid Row fan. Fishy, by the way, Scott Hill from Skid Row. Oh, is a Sully guitar owner. Oh, he plays Sully guitars. That's sick. That's sick. That's rad. That's, that's rad. That's rad. That's street cred, Fishy. Street cred. Queen Honey Bunny. You, you, you give me those hearts. I'll take them every single time. I love you. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well, QHB. And with that, is that the last Super Chat? Yep. Yep. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, hey, everybody. Oh, my wife's in the chat. So... I know. I, that's why I said you're the. Listen, I'm trying to give my wife compliments, and she's like, "Oh, uh, that wasn't a big enough of a compliment." <laughs> <laughs> oh, greetings, greetings, cult files. Greetings. Happy to see you here, so Southeast Asia. Nice. Welcome. Ireland's here. Pat, Ireland's here. Hell yeah, Ireland. <laughs> Vape worldwide, bro. Vape worldwide. Okay, so now that I'm completely sober at the end of a vlog, which I don't think has happened in a, in a while, there's always beer or something messing me up. 
I feel good about this. This was a damn hell ass fun vlog. I want to put that Addy stand up. I want, can't wait to get into this mayonnaise and hi. Just pick up a hose off your e hookah. Just vape. Just vape. So with that, I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm going to go. I'm going to say this is the end of the vlog live stream. Another Thursday in the record books. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. This is the best day of the week. <laughs> I mean, it is for me. Um, I hope you guys like coming and hanging out. And uh, thank you, everybody, for being super dope in the chat and, and always having fun. We never have any drama over here. We never have any trouble over here. Um, everybody's, you guys are so fucking super cool. I, you know, I can't say enough good things about this stream. I can't say enough good things about this community. I just can't. I can try but I won't. Uh, I'm going to go eat some mayonnaise. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to go do some great, some mayonnaise testing. Going to do some mayonnaise testing. So with that said, I'm going to say, hey guys, I love you. Peace out. Be excellent to each other. Be excellent to yourselves. Practice radical empathy. And remember that vaping maggots. Oh, did you mean Maggots are falling like rain. Maggots. 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 Maggots are falling like rain. You know. Yeah. So that's right. Don't forget to cheese your jelly. Remember that vaping is is gonna save a billion lives. Literally, more than that. More than that. It's going to change the world. It's already changing the world. Uh, it's it's disrupting so many revenue streams. It's disrupting smoking of cigarettes. It's it's actually disrupting big tobacco. Like the foundations of our country are like sugar and tobacco, <laughs> and and we are we are interrupting. We we are the great interrupter of all of those revenue streams. All because we didn't want to smoke cigarettes anymore, and we innovated vaping forward. And we created the consumer solution to the smoking problem. We did that. I mean, I didn't specifically, I was kind of just there. I watched it happen and I talked about it a lot, but we did that. Vaping did that. So be proud of it. Smash that like button. Um, be proud of not smoking cigarettes. Um, tell everyone you can about vaping, Freaking proselytize, do all the shit. Oh, wait, we got one more super chat from Jennifer Williams. Was there one more super chat from Jennifer Williams? Sebastian Bach plus the Trailer Park Boys equal genius. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this Trailer Park Boys. I haven't. Yes, Mo Rifleman. Yes. More importantly than anything else, it's embarrassing the shit out of the FDA. Embarrassing. They're embarrassed. Mike Bloomberg is embarrassed. I want to embarrass them for further. Okay, guys, don't forget about the calls to actions. Advocacy matters. I love you. Peace out. Be excellent. Keep being awesome. Let's see if I can get you some balloons here. Uh, nope, it's not going to work on this particular iOS operating system, is it? Yeah, whatever. Fun vlog tonight. Yeah, I had a real fun time. I hope you guys had fun and, and I hope to see you next week. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. I don't have an intro or an outro anymore, but I actually do because it's my BFF. It's own boy OC singing us away into the night with his soothing sounds. He believes he can fly. Peace out, everybody. Big love. Keep being awesome. I believe I can touch the sky any time of year. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. I believe I can fly.